Aussies have been making their opponents' head spin this autumn. Three play, three one, 150 points scored against two of the three best sides in the world. There's no doubt who is number one. Only the USA stand between England and a November of note. It's like boom, da, as a whole nother level, but we will be a different team next week. The Red Roses are ahead, early doors. This scoreline just keeps growing for the Red Roses. The masterclass is complete and the Blackburn's troubles have just deepened. Cow, she's on debut! She's gonna dot down in the corner! McDonald is there, she's over again! This is looking a very respectable scoreline now for the Red Roses. 1-23, come out and finish that job to get another win. No surprise then that there's a strong English presence when it comes to the end of year awards. Today's captain Zoe Allcroft and Poppy Clear have starred over the autumn and make the shortlist for Women's World Player of the Year. Simon Middleton also up for a gong as Coach of the Year, with England on an impressive winning streak. Many of the women's eagles will feel right at home today. Several members of their squad ply their trade in England. Alicia Washington will feel especially familiar with her surroundings as she plays here at Worcester. Recent defeats to Canada and Ireland mean the Eagles will want to end their tour on a high. And we have the fourth and final instalment of England's autumn series. It's the Red Roses against the USA from Six Ways Stadium in Worcester. And England have rung the changes for this one, and so have we. World Cup winner Marley Packer in for her debut, but we've got some experience alongside her in Maggie Alfonsi and Brian Moore. Now, you being rested today, Marley, would you rather be playing? Yeah, most definitely. I'm <laughs> a bit nervous doing this today, but really looking forward to it, and obviously to line up, against Ma line up with Maggie again. So, yeah, it's good to be back. I think we'd all rather be playing. <laughs> we'd be warmer, wouldn't we? And now, Marley, some mainstays of the team, including yourself, have been rested today. Gives opportunity for others. How much is that competition for places driving standards? Yeah, driving standards all the time. Um, I think younger players are chomping at the bit, like Sadia Claire out there again today, starting in that seven shirt. Um, but it just shows the likes of uh, your Amy Cocaines, Abby Ward, Poppy Cleo, and myself all missing out today. That's, there's about 200 caps there. but. The, the, the team that's going to go out there and finish the job, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited for it. Maggie, if England win today, that is 18 wins on the spin. Any danger of peaking between a World Cup? It's a good question. With less than a year to go before the World Cup, you know, have we seen the best of England? And I remember before the Rugby World Cup in 2017, England beat New Zealand in New Zealand, and then a few months after that in the World Cup final, they lost. Uh, so the worry was that. England were slightly complacent and I fear that could be the case now but at the same time they learned a lot from that World Cup and I feel this England team have got plenty more to come. Well Brian a good crowd expected here today at Six Ways and a million people watched England beat Canada last weekend on BBC Two. How significant is that do you think? Well you've as I say you've got to, to see it to be it and these are not token figures these are figures which are comparable to any other co programme in this slot. A million people watching, inspiring. England winning and playing the way they are doing only can be good. Yeah. Now, there are changes to this England team. You're proof of that because you're with us. So just give us an idea of one of the names, a few names to pick out for this team today. Um, I think Helena Rowland, so first start at 10 um, in this autumn, which I think is really exciting. Um, she comes off the back of the Olympics, um, slotting straight into Loughborough Lightning, and then she's been a big part of our, of our squad in this autumn. Then for me also, player to watch, Zoe Allcroft. Um, she's captain in the side today. It's also been her birthday this week. And to top it off, uh, uh, nominated for player, World Player of the Year. So, yeah, really looking forward to watching those two play today. Yeah, happy birthday to Zoe Allcroft. Now, Maggie, England have made some changes, but 
the US Eagles have as well. Yeah, so USA have made quite a few changes, but I think what's interesting about this USA side, they've got a few players that play over here in England. So they've got six players at the moment and two more to come over. Um, and this is a young side. They have 151 caps in the starting lineup in comparison to England's 399. Um, but the player that I'm really looking forward to watching is number five, Washington. You know, as mentioned at the top of the show, she plays her rugby down here at Worcester. So her battle with Old Croft is going to be really exciting to watch. Yeah, well, England warmed up with uh, some brutal training sessions in Simon Middleton's word against the South African women this week, who actually then brought some uh, colour and charisma to proceedings. Now, Marley, I know you weren't actually part of these training sessions, but what sort of feedback have you had from your fellow teammates? Um, so, South Africa came into a camp for two days of training, um, which is our midweek game, which is PPP, um, which was really good. And then afterwards, um, they did lots of songs and dances just to say thank you and that they've enjoyed their time, which the England girls were fully involved in, and which is really good to see. And it's all good for women's rugby to help. That never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I missed out. All the spring box did was kick me. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder if Simon Middleton was involved in that as well. He cut his coaching teeth at Leeds before joining the England setup in 2014. That was the year a certain Maggie Alfonsi was part of the team that won the World Cup. So who better to send to chat to the England head coach about an autumn to remember? Good to see you again. Come off the back of three really good wins. What's the feeling like in camp? There's a really good vibe. They've not just been wins, they've been really good wins for us, as you say. And two back to backs with the Black Ferns and, uh, and a very good Canada side gives us a lot of confidence. The masterclass is complete and the Black Ferns' troubles have just deepened. We set ourselves a headline when we came into the Orton's of learning and development. So we want to see individual progression. Going into this autumn series, uh, it's almost like a New England side. Have you done anything different going into camp? I think we've built on what we started. You know, obviously the introduction of Lewis Deacon has been huge for us. You know, he's galvanised the forwards and he's brought detail and ideas to them. That's brought them, not back to life, but it has re-energised them. Probably the super strength of this side at this moment in time is that every player wants to be the very best they can be and they are incredibly demanding, but in the right way. I want to know who are the characters in that England team because there's some young individuals who I can see on their social media that they've got a lot of energy. Who are the ones that you say they stand out? Bottomman, obviously. Massive character. Your TikTok twins, which are Zoe and Jess when she's in camp. Marley is absolutely brilliant, is Marley. She's so professional about, and who said that about Marley? Like, she's so professional in her attitude now, and she's a great leader within the squad. Guess I'm going to ask you the big question Can this England side win a Rugby World Cup? We can definitely win it, but France can definitely win it, and New Zealand can definitely win it. And I think there's one or two others who will definitely have a say in it. And I guess I want to congratulate you. You've been nominated for World Rugby Coach of the Year. Um, I don't know if I should curtsy or bow. <laughs> um, I mean, how amazing is that? How, did you ever expect that would ever be the case in your future uh, of coaching? No. no. Oh, yeah, I nearly fell over. Honestly, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I remember being offered a chance to, to start coaching when I finished at Leeds. I'd, I never even wanted to be a coach at that point. I never even considered it, but it, it, like I say, it grows on you. And it, it's like a player award. It's about your teammates as well. There's, there's, there's absolutely nothing in that award that isn't for everybody. Whatever we get that comes our way, it's, about, it's all about the squad. Yeah, deserved nod for Simon Middleton. It was a lovely smile there, Marley, when he described you now as the consummate professional. How much has he helped with your growth as a player? Yeah, he's been massive. Um, so I've been coached by Middle, uh, Simon for seven years now, and 
over that time it's not just been 15s it's been sevens as well and we've had lots of difficult difficult conversations along the way but um yeah it, it's good and it, it's even nice to see him evolving to actually the accolade that he's up for of being coach of the year is it, incredible and it just all of his hard work put, that he puts in is now coming to the forefront maggie you know him well uh lovely interview thank you <laughs> how much has he evolved as a coach yeah, I think he's changed, um, you know, the player's mentality as a coach and I think he's come through a lot on his journey. So, you know, he come from rugby league um, and now has become a coach that believes in himself and believes in the players. And I'm just excited to see where he can go on and I hopefully hope that he wins that award. I think his attention to detail is very good and I also think that he deserves praise for the brave choices he made. Emily Scarrett, very difficult to replace. Holly Aitchison, first cap, out of position. Uh, Poppy Cleal moved as well, these paid off. It deserves credit when it goes well because you'll get stick when it doesn't. Yeah, you're going off to commentary now. Thanks, thanks Brian. Well, Simon Middleton's opposite number is the Englishman, Rob Kane, who uh, had a very successful spell at Saracens before taking on the job as head coach of the uh, women's US team. He's been talking to Lauren Jenkins. I said this week is all about expecting the unexpected when it comes to a Rob Kane coach team. I'm not expecting you to give away the game plan, but what's the general approach ahead of what is an almighty challenge this afternoon? Yeah, it is an almighty challenge. I mean, you know, we really are trying to bring the best out of the players. We're trying to play really fast, high tempo chess. So it's a really nice thing that he's really picked on what we're trying to do. We saw a clip on social media last night of the girls singing, dancing with a caption, one more sleep until England. Just how excited are they by this challenge of facing the number one team in the world? They are excited. I think two words really are more apt to determine and focused. You know, we've been away from our families for a long time in a bubble. They've been working really hard and two years away from international rugby is a long time and they really want to sound off with a really good performance. A number of these girls do play in the Premier 15s. Um, one girl is a home ground in Alicia Washington. How much extra motivation does that give them? Yeah, Alicia's been looking forward to this, you know, for the last three weeks, coming home. She sees Worcester very much as a home. We're, we're very fortunate as a programme that she's here. Same as the other players that are representing their clubs in the Alliance today. And we're really hopeful that those performances and opportunities will really allow them to get the best out of 2022. Enjoy it, Rob. Thanks for your time. Well, this Thank US you. team hasn't had the easiest time post-pandemic since they came back to, to test rugby. Marley, what would England be expecting from them? Um, I think they're going to be a very physical side today. Um, also expect the unexpected. Uh, I've been coached by Rob Kane at Saracens before and he likes a game plan of like play what's in front of you uh, and make sure you get off that line break. So the offloads um, and, and just making sure that actually England need to make sure they, they, they cut off of the, the, the little tip-ons, the, the little offloads. So yeah, that's what I reckon we see from America today. Absolutely, and you can't underestimate America. I mean, look, this team may be sixth in the world. They may have lost the last three games, but when they score tries, they score very good tries. And, you know, there's a couple of examples I just want to show. Against Ireland, look, they're very good at being able to look for the offload. Um, they're really good at trying to support each other. So I think it's maybe because they've got a real athlete background and also a very sevens background. They're able to put width onto the ball, look for those short lines to cut. And you can see here that like, Ireland are unable to get their defensive structure in place. But it just highlights how good this USA side is because they really do work hard um, on the ball and they really will work hard for 80 minutes. But when I think about you know, this USA side, I have to say that if you're going to beat England, you have to make sure that you can match England's physicality. Uh, and again, I want to show some good clips of what England <laughs> have done. Look, England are very good at trying to come off the line. So look at Tuima here, I've highlighted her. She comes off the line, makes a massive hit. And Huipa, I mean, literally puts New Zealand back. And then England do it again. Watch Hannah Bottom. She comes off the line. They're relentless. They keep going forward. And then they pick the opportunity again to go for that counter ruck. And that's going to be absolutely key. They need to know when the moment's on to go for it. But they're also very good at almost being aggressive in that contact. So here, Byrne looks for the opportunity to target that ball. And I just want to show Ward, she does exactly the same thing. She goes for the ball, looks for the rip, and then again, they're really good at turning defence into attack. And when we talk about attack, England love to cut these really nice short lines. So Poppy Cleal here cuts a light from out to in, just gets into the corner of the New Zealand defence. And then watch um, Byrne, she goes herself as well, and that's a, cuts another lovely line and it creates these lovely open wide spaces for the backs to attack in. And it's a simple move from the back to score a try. And I really hope the backs can do that again today. You know, I want to see the backs score more tries because at the moment, the forwards are absolutely owning it. 
Marley, there's a player that you will know well on playing for America today, and that's Carly Waters, because she's a teammate of yours at Saracens. What a scr sort of scrum half is she going to be? Um, so she's flown over this season. She's um, a very feisty scrum half, but then <laughs> all scrum halves are very feisty. Um, she likes to boss at the forwards around. Um, I think she's got a really good fizz on the ball, so her passing quality is really high. So really excited to see her play today. Huge moment, Maggie, for Zoe Oldcroft, who is, is leading England out today. It's a, a, a massive, massive moment for her. What does she bring to, the, to this team? Um, I think for me, again, it's leadership. So we talk about Poppy Clill being a good leader, but then you bring another one like Oldcroft who steps up and, and you really highlighted, she's had a phenomenal week. She basically gets named captain of the England side, then gets no, no, uh, nominated for player of the year. And then it's her birthday on fr last Friday. <laughs> I mean, could it get any better? And, and I expect a lot from her because she's got um, Harriet Miller Mills, who's going to be a second row partnership. She's got to really step up today. Um, but at the same time, utilize the leadership group around her. She's a very composed player. I'm just pleased that she's been given the opportunity to lead this side. Yeah, yeah we can't wait for this one. Uh, can England end their autumn on a high? They've been rampant so far. They've just got to keep complete the clean sweep. The stage is set here at the Six Ways in Worcester. So let's go to our commentators for this one. It's England against America with uh, Brian Moore, World Cup winner Natasha Hunt. But first for us here, it's Sarah Orchard. Thanks, Sonia. Well, uh, yes, it is time for the final act. Welcome to Worcester, everybody, where we have a fine autumn day, gorgeous sunshine, slight breeze. It is a little bit chilly. And um, we actually bumped into Zoe Allcross' boyfriend earlier. He's forgotten his coat, so our thoughts are with Luke's fingers and toes right now. But still plenty of excited faces out there, uh, making up another impressive crowd. And the pitchers outside Six Ways were bursting with the next generation of red roses a little bit earlier today and most of them they're all now taking their seats we have also spotted a few usa fans out there as well so both sides will be well supported but yes look at them all packing in here ready for some very good rugby so yeah there are the stars and stripes being well represented you can just see England there coming out of their change room, getting ready to appear. There will, of course, be a very special welcome when England do come out. But, of course, it will be the USA, the visitors who emerge first from their changing room. They're known as the Eagles. They're currently ranked sixth in the world. Their captain today, of course, is Kate Zachary. He, she plays her rugby down in Devon with the Exeter Chiefs. In fact, six of the starting 15 play in England in the Premier 15s League. And they're quite open hopes from their coaching staff that more could follow, such as the esteem that the league is now held. There is Kate Zachary there, just on the right-hand side of the screen. Well, here we go, the 250 cappers. Worcester wing Lydia Thompson comes out to the adoration of her home crowd, having scored 36 tries for England since her 2012 debut. She is, of course, alongside Wasslock Rowena Burnfield, who's waited patiently for this moment. She made her last appearance in a white shirt back in February 2019. Of course, just alongside the pair of the two 50 cap women, you can see Zoe Allcroft there, another New England captain fresh from her World Player of the Year nomination. It adds to a pretty good week for the Scarborough girl. It's stuff full of uh, world nominations today. Simon Middleton, of course, also nominated for Coach of the Year. Well, both sides and the crowd will now make their stand against racism in any form. There's just no place for it in rugby, in sport or anywhere. And this is a message you will have seen now across all of the men's and women's Autumn Nation series.
Well, there will now be a moment of reflection for Kathy Flores. She was one of the biggest names and voices in American rugby. She was part of the 1991 USA team that won the World Cup. And when she retired, she went on to coach the Eagles. The words that I'm saying do not do justice for the impact that her life had on rugby union in America. She passed away, sadly, at the end of October after a long battle with cancer. I think you can see just from the face there of Alicia Washington what Kathy meant to so many in the sport. It is now time for the anthem, starting with the Star Spangled Banner. Now we'll have God Save the Queen. and let's take a look at the sides. Well, the only thing that Simon Middleton hasn't changed about this England side from last week is Sadia Kabir. She's wearing seven for her second cap. It's all changed everywhere else, including Wasps' Abby Dow getting a run at fullback, while Loughborough's Helena Rowland gets given the keys to number 10 alongside vice-captain and scrum half Leanne and Fante. In the forwards, Maud Muir gets her first start at tight head, while Harlequin's number eight, Sarah Beckett, she makes her first appearance of the autumns after recovering from a knee injury. Keep a close eye on the debutantes on the bench, Connie Powell and Lucy Packer. Well, this is Rob Kane's USA side. He's also rung the changes. Colorado Grey Wolves, Mackenzie Hawkins comes in at fullback, while the USA sevens regular, Kayla Connett, switches to the wing. In the forwards, the versatile Hope Rogers switches from tight to loose head in the front row as Loughborough Lightning's Charlie Jacoby wears three. Captain Kate Zachary switches positions from eight to seven, as does Christine Summer. She leaves the second row to shore up the back row. Well, 
Right then, it is time to say a very good afternoon to Natasha Hunt, better known as Mo, and Brian Moore. Now, Mo, you've played against these Americans. Who should we be watching out for? Two to keep an eye on for me are Kate Zachary and Kayla Kinnett. Kayla is a seasoned sevens international, fresh, fresh back from Tokyo 2020 and was a shining light at fullback last week. And I can't talk about this USA team without talking about the heartbeat, the captain, Kate Zachary. She really is a passionate, abrasive player, top try scorer for Exeter Chiefs, and I'm sure we'll see her leading from the front today. Well, there's our referee, former Canadian international, Julianne Zuzman. This is her second international. We're about to get underway then at Worcester. One last 80 for these women on the international stage this autumn. It's the USA who get us underway. Megan Foster puts the ball into the air. Of course, England wearing their chain strip today. We'll call it a raspberry top. We'll debate that one perhaps later. In fancy. Decides to put it back. Here comes Tuima. In the 50. Sent straight back by the United States, but that's an Have early mistake out. from them. Yeah, and they'll be frustrated from that, Brian Moore. Yes, well, I'd like to see England keep the ball in hand. They've been so successful in the pre three previous games, and I think it's a way of getting momentum rather than you know kicking the ball back and playing aerial tennis. Ball comes in from Davis. Taken in the air by Aldcroft. Playing in the air. Well, an early warning there to the USA. And here comes Aldcroft. She's got an early decision to make. And straight away, they're going to go for the corner. Yeah, you love to see it as well. England are going to want to keep this tempo high like they've done all autumns. Run into the line out, getting the ball back in play. And I'm sure we'll see a forward Thanks. drive here. You couldn't get a much better kick than that, could you? Right spot on the five meter there, line. You. Love for Lightning's Lark Davis with the long throw to the back. Very nice as Mills, Mills takes it. Here comes Cobra. <laughs> Harlequins, Vicky Cobra going over. Four tries for her while she's playing for England. And this will be worrying for the USA with not even two minutes on the clock. It's all too easy, isn't it, for England here? Lovely set piece play, the speed of the line out, great darts in from Lark Davis right at the back, top of the jump, top of the lift. And everyone was expecting England to drive that over. You see Vicky Cormora coming around the front. Normally you see that as a hooker, but brilliant work from Cormora to get in and around and lovely little footwork to evade the tackle. Well, you can look at the USA defence, but frankly, when you've got someone like Cormora at pace coming at you, you're static from five metres, you're not going to win. confidence early days and England looking strong early doors just to say the throw there that's a difficult throw it's a long throw has to be given a lot of air there's a bit, bit of wind today so excellent drill United States decide to go a little bit deeper on this occasion ball gathered there by Sarah Beckett back from that knee injury Apparently she's not very good at being on the sidelines and in the wings, very keen to get back involved, having had that break. Play on. Slightly scrappy. Aldcroft having to do a little bit of scrum half work. Oh. Roland. Caught by Foster. Back towards the near side. Zachary. Really nice take there on the near side by Kinnett. First chance to see USA running with the ball in hand. Waters. Big imposing figure of Howard there. Just testing Cowell out on that far side as both her and Detivo just have to watch the ball shuffle over into the far side touch. Thanks, Frankie. I think one of the problems the USA are going to have, England about being very judicious about not sending players into the breakdown they don't need to and therefore they're able to pack the defence and when the US are taking the ball they're taking it into traffic. That was a difficult take in the air. 
that's how Foto was really trying to get up in the face of England there as Tuima goes straight into trouble. Roland, Dow. Here comes Dow. She's wearing 15, but she's doing what Dow does. Still going, Abby Dow. What a try! Stunning from the Wasps woman. Nominated this week for the World Try of the Year. She may have just pulled off another. Stunning. She's just brilliant to watch in four flight, isn't she, Abby Dow? Just really nice bend. You see the ball transfer in and away, another bend, and then she does this all day long. There's not even any footwork. She just backs her raw pace, her raw ability to get on the outside. Fantastic finish by her. 22 caps, 22 tries, ladies and gentlemen. That is outstanding. Well, there were two players outside who didn't need them, didn't look, backed herself all the way. Very difficult to full back when you're having to cover across. Then there's suddenly a change of direction and you're caught flat footed. You only get half an arm on. Superb run. Yep. Well, the ball's Here's just uh, been knocked over there. There is quite a bluster out there. Holly Aitchison is actually lying down on the ground at the moment, just uh, performing the duties of holding the ball, and she's just caught that one to the left-hand side of the post, Helena Rowland. So it remains 12-0. It's the way Abby Dow just makes it look so easy, and she has just absolutely nailed that. <laughs> she really has. I think Kinnett on this near side will be disappointed with that tackle attempt. She's better than that, but take nothing away from that finish. Absolutely sublime. Once again, America's just pushing out towards that far side as Beckett takes it forwards. Loose. A bit of a tidying up job required. Infante. Roland. A lot of pressure going on for Roland to get those kicks away as Foster now has a run towards Connect. One on one with Dow. Waters. Big call for us. Summers wanted the ball. Allcroft there really pushing backwards. Pass down the line. Lost backwards. And it's Hawkins having to go in, but go lost forward. forwards. And we get our first chance to see a scrum. It's going to be a really hard day at the office for this USA team if they can't generate any kind of momentum. You see here, just every tackle being knocked back behind the gain line, so they're not getting any momentum at all, making each carry harder and harder. Interesting for me as well, England are choosing to kick. They've got three in the backfield, USA have, so they're sat waiting, but they're still not really making any ground from that counter-attack. Crouch! Bind! Set! US holding their own there, but Beckett comes away with it. Pop top ball, here comes Kabea. Strong run there by the Loughborough Lightning flanker. But it's been turned over on the floor. Washington. Support there from Eric here as Waters looks up. Referee happy that that was all backwards and big hits going in on Zachary. Foster feeds it down the line. Hawkins on it. Stolen ball. Aitchison was there. Now it's Tuima and now it's Cam. Alaquin's wing scored two last week. Matthews managed to give it to the captain, Allcroft. Infante, Roland, Cabea. Stay down, White. Stay down. Well, Infante there just lost her footing. Tackler. Warning then for the Americans. A kick right in front of the sticks, but interesting if England even bother with thinking about that. Well, England causing all sorts of problems. We've got 
two pods carrying. You see when the ball is being taken towards contact, they're switching and moving the ball just before contact, so the defenders have a question to answer. Where do they go in and make the tackle? Just look at this rip by Holly Aitchison, really nice. She was almost surprised herself that it came out. Better in this area. Really good work as well to keep that ball alive and lovely little footwork and run by Heather Cowell as well. There's just a player down receiving a little bit of treatment at the moment on the floor, hence why our referee has just paused it. And it's an important player for America as well, it's Megan Foster. Look at those stats on your screen. Meters made, 123 versus 30. Huge numbers. Worth mentioning, of course, that the USA, they are ranked sixth in the world at the moment. They come into this off the back of a, quite a few losses this autumn. They played back-to-back -back fixtures you. against Canada over in Colorado. Yeah. And then they lost okay. last week also against yeah. Ireland. Let's get them on. Thank you. For me, this is a really nice bit of defensive work, something that USA have done in the first 10 minutes they can be proud of. Just get the wheel on the scrum, and then you see the six Eckery come across. Summer makes that tackle. England don't get anywhere on it. So really nice bit of defensive work there from USA. Taken quickly, Kabea going forward, manages to give the ball to Tuima. Tuima's still going. Infante was caught there. Davis. Warnings going in there to the USA. And there's the penalty. Comes back. There's numbers on this near side. Should that pass have gone away? It's Alex Matthews who had that. They're going to come back for the penalty, but an argument if that ball should have been passed. Yes. <laughs> There's <Yes>. Brian. <laughs> no argument at all. I think Alex Matthews' eyes lit up, yeah. potentially going over in front of her home crowd. She really should have passed that, though. Lydia Thompson on the outside, a potent finisher. So that's definitely yeah. going to be brought up in analysis this week, I'm sure. OK, so you can see coming onto the field now, it's Nana Fatavesi. That's after we've just seen a Megan ten. Foster have to go off. It's her penalty, yep. Yeah. It's her penalty. Do we have the sub on? We're just waiting for confirmation of what Carly Waters has actually gone off for. We think it it's might on. be okay. a blood Let's replacement. It's gone. Red ball. And a big decision here as England decide to go for the scrum. Well, it opens up all sorts of possibilities. A huge blind side here. Very difficult to defend. If they get the right hand side up. Well, no one minds if you back yourself, but you've got to score. As simple as that. If you look on the right hand side here, if there's a slight wheel right, 8, 9, 15, 14, there'll be possibly two, two player overlap. You can see as well on this picture the width that Faravesi is standing at just opens up that channel for Beckett to pick and Leanne Infante to run straight down. I know I just said that the defence was really strong in the last scrum from USA, but that is a really tall ask for Faravesi right on her line, five metres away. Well, especially I'm surprised the scrum half is standing Crouch. there and not further back so she yes, can go sorry. left or right yes, and cover because it does leave gaps really close to the scrum. We can hear though our referee has been talking to both sides saying we will get this right, but she really wants that space. Crouch! Bind! Yes, Charlie! Set! USA pushing for everything, but so are England. This is a specialist topic. And it's going to be picked by Beckett. Pass that to Infante. She finds Dow. Dow is caught, but there's still Thompson on the side. Thompson goes over in front of her home crowd on her 50th cap. And England are three up. 17 points on the scoreboard. Well, the USA very nearly got that right, Fabrizi, coming in. And while she got the player, she couldn't prevent the ball being offloaded. It's a 
really good timing at the back here by Beckett and Infante. You see the advantage come. As soon as that advantage has come, you know that you can come back for the penalty. So get the ball away. Dow does really well just to hold her feet, ride the tackle and get the ball away. Really nice play by her. Single hand, back to two hands to make the pass. And Lydia Thompson is scoring that all day long. What dreams are made of for her. Great to see. No conversion there for Helena Rowland. Another chance to take a look at uh, Lydia Thompson finishing that one up. 37 tries now she scored in her 50 caps. They've just managed to shuffle who's taking that restart. It's Kayla Kinnett. Of course, she was uh, playing fullback last week against Ireland. Push, push. Infante. No, Formula on the floor. Infante appealing. Wants the ball back. Goes to Tuima. Nice take out on that far side. Hawkins. Ooh, she's just a little bit of a slip there. Already England have run 200 metres so far. Wonderful take there going forward there by Hope Rogers. Oh, it's gone slightly forward, but the USA do have a penalty, England offside. And they were offside by about four metres. That won't please the coach because there's no need to do that. You want discipline, even though you know, England are comfortable at the moment. This will be what is demanding the high standards all the way around. Well, Howard has it. She just takes her time over that one. And this is the best field position we've had. Rob please, Kane, sorry. or Coach Kane, as he is known, there, will be pleased with this. To hear Hamden. Nice take at the back there by the States. Hamden arrives to just tap that one up the shoulder. Makes the way round the corner. Still the USA going forward, but it's been dropped forward on the floor. And another warning then to England as the USA get another penalty. Really important now that the USA just settle. They kick this into the corner and they come away with points here. As you've mentioned, this is the first time they've had territory in the England half, let alone in the England 22. Really nice drills initially from the line out. You see the detail of Summer coming around the back just in case there's an overthrow. Really nice lift. Thank you. See what they've got here. See here, Hamden just overshooting that, but taken really nicely there by Talfa. Uh oh. Not That's happy that right. wasn't straight, though, and that will be so frustrating. They were looking strong, the, the Americans. Yeah, they were. A really nice angle on this replay. You can just see it coming out. I know it's windy, but you've just got to do better. That's a skill error for me. Hamden needs to do better there. Well, I watched Hamden in the uh, warm-up, and she was being asked to throw long all the time, and she was having difficulty. And the problem as a hooker, if you get into your mind that you've got a difficult throw, it's a bit like putting, you get the yips, you don't quite go through with it properly. They need to call a ball that she wants to throw and she can hit. Oh, England are pushing the USA backwards. They've been turned inside out and backwards. Here comes Tuima. Back then to Roland. Lovely take there by Connect. She's a USA Sevens player. Great footwork as it's taken this time by Roland. Played plenty of Sevens in her time as well. Infante to Aldcroft. Nice counter reckon coming in by the United States and they've got the penalty as well. They are very happy with themselves. It's really good work by USA. 
sensing the opportunity, going through with intent. Really nice work from Washington and Vicky Cornbrose just playing the ball on the floor. That's what the penalty is for. But what about that take from Kinnett? Well, it was right in front of us. It was over a shoulder. That is a very difficult skill. Hold the space right where you are. The sense the US are warming to this task. They were a bit, uh, they were a bit caught cold. With the batching England physically at the breakdown now. Well, once again, the United States just slightly overshoot that, but they do manage to tidy it up. Rogers. She was playing tight head last week. Now she's playing loose head. Real high, highly rated player. And another one in the form of Zachary. Back down the line. Fatavesi. Rogers just ran her ankles there. Referee is going to bring it back. Forward pass. And it means scrum, that the United off. States are going to have to look at another scrum. This, this is a better passage from play from them, but the execution's not there. Yeah, you can see the intent to get ball to space, which is what I'm loving from this USA side. Summer, for me, just needs to take one or two steps forward, but you see Kate Zachary, first of all, try and get the ball to the lip. Thank you. Summer goes forward, and unfortunately for her, it's just come up forward out of the hands, but really nice that the USA team are actually identifying. You saw Waters change the direction of play. I think you heard on the ref mic as well, someone shout, girls, work from USA, so definitely intent to play right now. Here comes Tuima then, spinning. Infante wants quick ball. Nice back inside to Allcroft. Roland supporting her shoulder through Aitchison. That one has been stolen there on the floor, but not legally by Howard. I can't play on from that. Just knocked on here in the pickup. Scrum red ball. Well, they're happy that it's just a knock-on. Come back for the scrub. The difference between the teams, England's rook speed is quicker than the USA. Yeah. Therefore, they're getting the ball back and they don't have to commit as many players to win that ball. The USA is slower and they're having to commit more players, which means when they look up and they look for space, they're faced by more so defenders. On the last one? All of that Let's for me like is that. just coming from the intent of the carry. Yes, Every single time England are carrying, it seems as though they're getting over the game line, they're getting in behind the USA defence. Whereas conversely for USA, they're just being stopped the whole time. So it makes it really easy to just come in with a few numbers. And England have had one or two offloads. And as you know, as a defender, that's something you just can't stop because it immediately takes the carrier way beyond the game line. Yes, Charlie! Okay. That was too early then from England. So the United States get a free kick. See more of Muir there. A little bit of frustration on her face. Carly Waters eventually gets them underway. Big push back. What a tackle there by Cabea. Back down the line, this time taken forward by Howard. She plays her rugby with Sale Sharks. And here comes the counter from Allcroft. Not nominated for World Player of the Year for nothing. Unplayable. Scrum. Wait, Paul. Unplayable. Zoe Allcroft, what can we say about this woman? One of only two players, you have to say, who has started every match throughout this autumn series. That was the huge hit from Kabea. And you have to say, we've seen a lot more of Kabea in this fixture than we did last week against Canada. Yeah, already she's made a real impact defensively, but I've got 19 minutes until half-time. I can probably talk about Zoe Allcroft until then. She's Not absolutely... Not that they to Hartbury teammates or anything. <laughs> she's just brilliant, honestly. Such a good person, such a great player. She's like a player and a half. Love playing with her. You would say, hold on to their ball. Howard. Zachary has to straighten up. Washington. Nice pop off there to Rogers. Waters again, this time to Howard. Hamden got support by Summers going over the top. 
Hodges just gave it again there to Tafoto. Waters back to Howard. She kicks through. The chase is on. Infante's trying to get there. It's Abby Dow. They didn't want her to get it because she's just going to run. Still going. She just refuses to be tackled. Well, there was the warning to Kate Zachary. I'll make the pass. I'll make the pass. She's a bit of a pest, Kate Zachary, isn't she? She is. She's captain. one of those players that you don't really enjoy playing against very much, but you just have so much respect for. She's always nipping at your heels, especially as a scrum half, and you know that she's constantly coming at you. There's no one really in this ruck, though. There's no one protecting the nine, so almost fair game. I see why she's gone through on that. Roland to Ema. Aitchison. Infante to Cornbra. I should say it's been a big week for Vicky Cornbra. She's been voted as the Rugby Players Association Vice Chair. First woman to have a seat there on the board. Taken then by Hawkins. Oh, huge hit going in. Massive hit. It's taking a real long time for the USA just to secure their ball. Wait, let's go. Saracen scrum half waters clears down the far side. England plenty of time to make formation to gather. Dow goes again and she's got space. There's Thompson, couldn't quite take the pass, but Beckett is there. But it was forward on the first occasion. They come back for this one. Well, I don't blame. I really uh, don't blame Thompson there. The pass, it was an easy pass. It was put over her shoulder. Yeah, substitution. It's a very simple pass. Substitution, 22. Substitution. That's textbook for me. Anyone watching this as a young rugby player, you don't need to go that close to the defence before you make that two on one. She was completely sold, is all Abby Down needs to do. This Howard is all Abby Down needs to do is just pass that ball. Lydia Thompson is one of the quickest in the game. But for me, Abby Dow has not been tackled by the first player once. She has always evaded that first tackle. What would you say about the uh, receiving player? Your hands up so there's a target there as well? Absolutely. It's been a little bit of frustration there in the face of Simon Middleton. We find her in. Well, Zachary has managed to come away with that. Worth mentioning that Megan Foster is back on the field. It was for blood that she went off. Waters back to Foster. Not taken clearly by Infante. And that's gone forward. Infante, vice captain for the Red Roses today. Not up to her normal high standards that day. And as well as having to talk with England, getting the better of them in the breakdown, the USA under pressure in the scrum as well. Zachary did very well to pick up from a retreating scrum. For me, if you just look at the amount of USA bodies in and around this breakdown, this is what we were talking about earlier. They're burning so many numbers, which just makes it really difficult to play any kind of shape out the back of the ten. Well, if you like your scrum rugby, that's a great shot for you to get a close-up of it as Water struggles at the back there at the back to get that quickly. Oh, big hit going in there by Katana Howard. Strong carrier. Howard again. This time taken forward by Jacoby. Tackler first. Tackler first. You're fine. Tackler first. More penalties for the USA and a chance for them to get position. Marks on the line. This will be frustrating, Simon Middleton. I think England have just kind of gone away from what's working with them. A few errors, a few penalties that they're giving away that are just unnecessary at the moment. They don't need to go in at that breakdown. If someone's on the floor, you can just get the chat into Lark Davis to leave that ball. 
They're giving Just USA six, a lifeline six, at the moment. Hamden, lovely throw from her. Waters to Foster, who had to take that one almost going backwards. Zachary out there in the midfield. Playing advantage to the United States, another penalty. That's the fifth penalty that England have conceded, and not surprisingly, not the ref's going to have a word. Have a word, please. Thanks. Just hold. Hold. She's having a word. Here's a big test then of Zoe Allcroft to warn her side that they are going to have to be very careful over the next few minutes. All right, Red, let's go. Really nice leadership as well because in the middle of the pitch, you probably don't need to bring anyone in, but England have lost their way a little bit. I just mentioned it, and I'm sure that that's what she was saying. She probably wasn't saying the referees just said it's five penalties. She's probably saying, girls, let's go back to script. Let's go back to what's working. Mother, there are penalties which you understand people give away when they're under pressure, when they're on the line and so on. But ones in the middle of the field, not getting behind the back foot, those are the ones that are unnecessary. And it's just a question of discipline. Another long throw there, taken nicely by Eriki. Foster, Howard, Zachary. USA just can't hold on to this ball. Referee happy, that was backwards as Waters now has it. Top back inside then to Howard. Foster, Zachary again. USA, they're just struggling, they're running out of options. It's almost like they're having to think too much on their feet as they knock on the ball and England get the scrum. What's confusion from first receivers, who is or isn't calling for the ball, whether they're going left or right. And I feel sorry for the scrum half because the head is down, you've got to concentrate on the ball and you need to be told by people who can see more than you where you are going to focus and throw the ball. See Carly Waters there. We said earlier she plays for Saracens. Crouch! She actually says in her uh, bio for the USA that she's a big fan of uh, Danny Kerr and Fafta Kirk. Doesn't mention Mo Hunt, sorry about that. <laughs> I think she can forget the just on this occasion. Oh, Waters will be feeling that one tomorrow. Allcroft. Roland. Here comes Aitchison, is this going to make the space? Shante had to get that one quickly, Kabea. Allcroft, support from Matthews. Infante, Roland. Muir. Maud Muir on her first start for the Red Roses. She's been a, a bench warmer so far, coming on each time, but a chance to really get a good few minutes under her belt today. Infante, show and go, still on her feet. England penalty, will Infante go? She thought about it. We see what happens when you get Consecutive rope speeds of under three seconds. Defences just struggle really badly to get realigned. Just look at this presentation from Zoe Orkoff. Pops her hips, puts the ball back, and that's what gives Holly Aitchison that extra time to go on the outside break. Lovely work at the breakdown. Yeah, I understand. And here's a lovely little slide as well from Leanne Infante. Well, USA just in a little bit of a huddle at the moment. They've been warned by the referee now for their penalty count. All discipline just creeping into both sides. All Croft in the air. Here comes the drive. Davis has it. She's looking to ride and roll to the line. Lock Davis over. Try given. She's out playing for England. And that is a move we have seen again and again from this England side throughout this autumn series.
Well, irresistible when it's done properly. The important thing is that England let the thing form before they start, decide to go forward. Make sure the blockers are in front, the ball is to the back, there's a wide base, and once you start going, then there's nothing you can do about it when it's set up properly. It's really good drills, isn't it? Top of the lift again, top of the jump. Line-out ball's fantastic. Really nice setup. Everyone working in the same direction. You see Zoe Allcroft at the front turning the corner. Really, really nice work from the English pack. It's another one that's just gone slightly to the left-hand side of the uprights. So uh, Helena Rowland now one for four with the boot. And that will be a little battle within itself when it comes to who continues to hold on to that 10 shirt. But this is Lark Davis just going over. It's taken a while for them to manage to go for that fourth track. Lark Davis winning a 35th cap today. Foster from the restart. And it'll come as no surprise that, once again, Harlequin Sarah Beckett takes the ball. Infante. Roland couldn't quite take that. She's got herself in a bit of a tangle now. Infante with plenty of options there. Davis, a try scorer. Aitchison, haven't had to see too much of her kicking there from those positions, but she does have a boot if required, Zachary. Nice take there, you can just see the hands flying there by Connect. you can tell that she's used to playing sevens in those positions. Spinning work by Rogers. Washington. Foster. time taken forward by Jacoby. And she just is handing off red roses for fun. But it's been recycled and comes through Miller Mills. Woolcroft again, who has carried an awful lot of ball so far this afternoon to Ema. Waiting back out there was Beckett. She's got Aitchison with her. Cow is always there waiting. That last pass just not quite getting there in time. Cornborough with the pass to Tuima. Is there something building here? Is in the end all Croft decides to straighten things up, wait for the support. Roland to Dow. Still Dow, what a surprise. She's managed to shrug up the tackle. She loses the ball. And Kinnett says thank you. Advantage over. What a tackle by Alex Matthews. Alex Matthews in front of a home crowd, just showing what she can do. That is two players you do not want to run into. Zoe or Croft. And Alex Matthews, again, you see Abby Dow. That's Jacoby, she's, cut, she's got away from there. No right to do that, really good tackle coming in from Hamden, but look at that here, Alex Matthews, Zoe Allcroft on Connect. She'll feel that one tomorrow as well. There goes Dow. She actually scored a 14 minute hat trick against Gloucester in the Premier 15s earlier this season. I won't mention that too loudly to Natasha, who's alongside me, because she had to play against that. Allcroft takes the ball. They're a long way out here, England, but this is rumbling along very nicely. Davis has the ball tucked away. Alicia Washington is warned to move. Can they go the whole distance? Well, they've travelled nearly the whole 22. The USA still trying to throw the kitchen sink at it. In the end, Milar Mills spins out. Davis gathers. 
Matthews is there. Matthews. Kante just looking for options on either side. Top top. Still short. Here comes Allcroft. England need to be careful here because you don't want that ball held up over the line to be a goal line dropout to the United States. They decide to spin it out wide. Aitchison, pass, she thought about it, but she decided not quite to pass. Back inside, Cornbrook. Davis. Well, the Red Roses will be so frustrated if they don't go over from this position. Infante! She saw the space, she saw the gap, and Leanne Infante goes over for try number five. Well, England having the patience to stay in the red zone and wait till the optimum chance came to score. And you have to say, the USA put a magnificent shift defensively in there, eventually stopping the line-out drive. Defended really well, but unfortunately just could not in the end stop Infante going over. Yeah, it's really good patience at the bottom of the ruck, isn't it? And a good spot. Classic nine try, nice and cheeky over under the sticks. But for me, I just really want to see England pulling the ball out quicker. Get it out into the backhands. There was so much space. Here we see the try again, but for me, Aitchison, that ball had to go on the outside and equally there were so many opportunities to go either left or right of the breakdown because the carries had narrowed the USA defence so, so much. It just shows the confidence in this English team at the minute. Maybe they've lost a little bit for that middle third of this half. Well, once they've been warned about not touching the nine, it was almost as if once you picked it up now, I can't touch it, so you got a head start. <laughs> Sarah Beckett must be bored of catching that ball by now. To Ema. Just off the foot there. Megan Hawkins does gather. Plays a rugby for the Colorado Grey Wolves. Two, need to get back around. Warning there against Lars Davis. As Carly Waters just holds on to the ball. Got a lot of time for Carly Waters, the uh, USA number nine, mainly because she said her hobby is eating ice cream. <laughs> See you at the van. I'll be there. Surely not today. It is freezing. Even on a cold day, I'm there. <laughs> Thanks, Ricky. She's a good woman. Here's your line. Thank you. There you are right there. She's got a line out to deal with here. This could be the last throw of the dice Six. as we close into the last minute of the half. Can the USA make a mark on that board? It doesn't look likely as that one's hacked on. Great kick down the field by Infante. That one is rolling. Remember, it's an artificial pitch here at six ways, and that's gone a long way. It was Detivo who had to get back, but Roses arriving in their droves. They've done well to get back and recover that. Waters then, big box kick. That one has gone out, the clock's not red yet, so there is time for a line-up. Game management for Thank me, you. if I was Waters there, you've just come from England's 22 all the way into your own. I'd have taken one more breakdown and kicked that off, taking the half-time rather than giving this Red Roses attack another opportunity. Well, that was an unlikely mistake, first of all, by England, and then Again, straight away, right. USA couldn't quite control. But it's a penalty. It was over. It was over. Yeah, yeah. Um, Time's expired. Well, you heard that straight away. Kate Zachary said, "Kick it out." So you see the double touch there by Megan Foster means that is the half, an imperious half of rugby by England. The USA, they certainly can play, but they don't have any answers just yet. Half time. It is England 29, USA nil. Um, it was much. No, it was much better after we had that chat. Yeah. So just
Well, England off to a typically fast start here at Six Ways Stadium. Abby Dow getting off to a glorious try from her. England really playing so well here. They have had some missed opportunities. They've left points out there, undoubtedly, but uh, Lark Davis isn't going to miss from uh, that close range. And uh, Leanne Infante adding one late on. So England by 29 points to nil uh, at the break. We are going to talk again with Marley Packer and Maggie Alfonsi uh, about some missed opportunities that England have, have left out there. But let's start, let's accentuate the positive, Maggie, because they made a, the typically flying start. They haven't been behind at half-time in any of these four test matches. So how, posit how impressed were you way, by the way they got off to that very positive start? For me, I mean, the ability to come out of the blocks um, it was, was impressive. Look, England are very good at trying to start well, and the key thing for them is trying to maintain it. Look, in the first two minutes, they scored their try, um, and it, again, it was just well-worked hands from them and, and their ability to communicate together. But, you know, when we think about the way England play, they're very good at their driving malls, and it's the ability to recognise the opportunity that was on. So, look, it was a really good lineup, and that was the back pill, and Vicky Cornbread just running around, cutting that in line again trying to narrow the opposition defense um, and then we look at their second try which came from down within five minutes I mean she's playing 15 and oh my god she spots the gaps and she cuts these beautiful lines you know brushes off two missed tackles and then uses the pace to skin um, their, their winger which just shows you that she is someone you can put her in as a winger you can put her as a fullback probably put her as a flanker and she'll still do a good job Oh, yeah, she's having a very good game, Abby Dell. We talked about it before the match, Marley, that we, we knew that England would bring a certain physicality to this game. They are professional athletes. Um, how impressed have you been by the way that they've set about their business, particularly up front? Definitely. Uh, Sadia Kabea, she great front up tackle, line speed, made a massive hit. Also, Alex Matthews, Sarah Yorcroft, you've seen it. Um, the tackles that are going in are phenomenal. I would like to see the tackles lower from England. It's about getting low, let's making sure then we roll away and then we can get on for the jackal. We've given a couple of cheap penalties away now, so actually, let's get lower, let's get out. The opportunity is there to take. Yeah, look, last weekend we talked about what England did well was the physicality. And you watch here in this clip, they come off the line. I mean, literally the first five steps, they fly out of the line. Um, and then again, when they carry the ball, they're really direct. We saw here, obviously, Vicky Cormer's running lines. But they are looking to target the ball, look for that rip, uh, and just try and turn a good defence into a really good attack. And I hope they do the same thing again in the second half, because you can't let USA back in, regardless of um, their opportunities. I think England's starting to highlight the fact that their physicality is what's going to really make sure they kick on in this game. Yeah. And okay. I think, sorry, sorry Mar uh, Marley, I was going to say, should we go to the black marks now? <laughs> because they've, despite being 29 nil up and they're looking relatively comfortable at the minute, there are missed opportunities that England failed to take chances, didn't they? Yeah, like, I think the missed opportunity down in the corner here, Alex Matthews would be mad at herself. All she just needed to do is give that to Lydia Thompson and Thompson would have been in for her first try on her 50th cap. Um, also, Holly Aitchison, um, she just should have given it out wide early doors. Yeah, that was Abby Dow there yeah. to, to, to Lydia Thompson, the way we thought she was going to score on her home turf. Yeah, and we talk about look, the things that England do well. Look, they're really good at attacking, but it's recognising when the opportunities are on. Again, look, at the moment they're on this winning run. They're quite confident that they're going to beat USA at the moment, but they need to not give away silly penalties. They need to not give away these opportunities where they know they can definitely score more points. And I think, you know, going into the second half, I can imagine Simon Middleton saying in the ha half time, guys, we need to cut out these errors. And when the opportunity is on, let's try and get those tries. The tries came, didn't they, in the, in, towards the end of that? second half Lydia Thompson if you like she got she got on finally got on the score sheet on her home turf that'll be a big moment for her oh and it was really good because it came from a very good scrum look they got a little bit of a will Infante really did well to try and commit three players and then the space was out wide really for Thompson and look it's important to recognize with Thompson it's her 50th cap and she gets to score a try on the 50th cap at home which was absolutely brilliant uh, but you know again it's better trying to be clear and clinical yeah and with that you can't say Abby Dow like to get that offload away to Lydia Thompson for that try is phenomenal and it just shows how on fire she really is. And that last try as well, I mean, look, England's 
driving Maul has been a weapon throughout the whole entire series and Davis has scored some very good tries off that and then Fante gets the opportunity and sees the gap herself look when any nine is at the base of the breakdown they're going to look for what's in front of them and she saw there the USA team look they look to split and heads up runs over and gets a very good try yeah that was a good sniper's try from a scrum half there there wasn't it England have been have gone well in the set piece haven't they their very first try came from that fantastic line out move Maud Muir playing at hooker today. She's been at the heart of some of that, hasn't she, Maggie? Oh, yeah, Muir. So she's actually playing at prop, and she's uh, it's her first um, Sorry, prop, start. tight head prop. Sorry, right. yeah, mistake. sorry. She can play anywhere in the front row. <laughs> she um, she's been really good, and we expect a lot from her because she's young, she's talented. But, look, the backs can't necessarily score their tries if they haven't got a very good platform. And this try, yes, Thompson scores it, but it's because Muir works really hard um, to try and get a, a one over her opposition player. You know, you expect a lot from a young player like that to really step up, and I think she's done very well today in this first half. Wouldn't you agree, Marley? Yeah, definitely. And it's just a thing that actually she's come out there. She can play all three positions and across that front row. And she's got a first start for England today, and yeah, she's real bedding herself into this game really well. Yes. Should we find out a little bit more about? Uh, uh, Maud Muir because she, as, as uh, Marley was just saying there, has made her first start today for England. She's one of these youngsters that's come through this autumn and uh, Simon Middleton is tipping her for bright things with the World Cup in mind. So we sent Claudia MacDonald, uh, the England number nine, along to meet her. So this is Claude and Maud. Hi, I'm Maud. I'm Claude. And together we're Maud and Claude. <laughs> Claude and Maud. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? I don't get it. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Maud, what's your hidden talent? This is perfect. There's too many to choose from. <laughs> what? Oh, I did used to sing and dance and perform, didn't I? Yeah. In Oliver. Who will buy this wonderful morning? <laughs> if past lives are real, what was yours? What Ooh. was my past life? What were you? What was I? Just a big sack of potatoes. <laughs> Ooh, this one. In an emergency, who is the first person you called? Not me. <laughs> Not Claude, answer. because Claude doesn't pick <laughs> up. Um, <laughs> probably my dad, who's straight to the point. He's at more just, it's fine. Just stop panicking. Yeah, stop You'll be panicking. alive. <laughs> You'll be fine. What is your rugby dream that you are yet to achieve? I mean, go to a World Cup would be pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. You'll smash it. With you. With my Claudie. <laughs> oh, what is your favourite emoji? You have to do it with your face. I like doing this one. Oh, I know the one. I know the one. I like this one. Yeah. <laughs> you know the one? The one, <laughs> the one with the face of yeah, the one. They nailed that. Yeah. I think that's the start of a double act, isn't it, in the England camp? What has she brought, Maud Muir, to this uh, England setup, Marley? And she's just really vibrant around camp. She's always got a smile on her face, and, and she's good to be around. Like you've seen on uh, Shauna Brown Instagram story this week, uh, she can flare her nostrils. So I've learned something this week about Maud Moore. Um, so, but yeah, no, it's just really good. Um, she's put the work in. She was with us um, in the Six Nations, and she didn't get a start, didn't get a cap then, but she put the work in. Uh, been playing really well for Wasp, and she deserves um, everything that's coming for her. Maggie, it must take a lot of confidence for a young player to come into a squad and be as comfortable as she seems. Yeah, and she's settled in really well, as Marley's really highlighted. It's almost like she's been there for a very long time and you only expect players like that to continue to grow and she'll learn um, how to really be a good forward, um, a really good prop behind the likes of Burns, you know, Vicky Cornborough, etc. She'll learn how to develop to be this brilliant England player and I hope that she will continue to just build on that performance because the World Cup's coming around the corner and she's going to want to get a starting journey. She certainly is. Well, look, we've got big crowds here at Six Ways. We've had uh, big audience figures here on BBC Two, and I think it's real sparking and interest in the women's game at grassroots level as well. All in the same year that the RFU is celebrating its 150th anniversary. We can go to Lauren Jenkins and get some more news on that. Yes, Sonia, I'm here with the Chief Operating and Finance Officer of the RFU, Sue Day, more commonly known, of course, as a former England captain. So it goes without saying, this has been a hugely successful campaign for England this autumn. But look, how big an impact is what's happening on the pitch having on what's happening off it at grassroots level? 
What's happening on the pitch is clearly so important from a performance perspective, and you're right, it's been a brilliantly successful autumn series for that reason, but the impact that it has off the pitch is almost more important. The fact that little girls and boys can see these amazing women teams playing each other, it's, it's inspiring to, to the kids coming through. And there's a, a big girls rugby festival happening just outside the stadium called In the Warrior today, which I quite like because sort of says, you know, we've seen role models emerging for England over the last few weeks. The likes of Sarah Byrne, quite an aggressive physical player, Abby Dow today. Sort of says, doesn't it, to young girls, look, that's a bit of me there and I can identify with that particular sort of player. Exactly right. Each and every one of these players is a role model to, to the girls who are just picking up a rugby ball and started playing. I went over to see the girls' festival earlier and the organisers told me the only problem they had was they didn't quite have enough space to fit in all the girls that wanted to, to, to pick up a rugby ball and join in. And it's events like this that are inspiring them to be able to do that. Do you think there are still barriers in the women's game? Perhaps some grounds are attracting more crowds than others. Obviously, we are still looking ahead to next year. Don't know when the Six Nations is happening next. Do you think there's more that can be done to better market the product? Uh, absolutely. We're on a real growth trajectory for the women's game. We've come a really long way, but there's a really long way still to go. We want to be filling out grounds like this every time we play. Give it a few years, we want to be filling out Twickenham Stadium for women's internationals. And, and similarly at grassroots level, there are loads of opportunities for girls to play, but there still aren't enough. We want every rugby club around the land there to be the opportunity for girls to play as well as boys. Plenty to, still to do then, but for now, plenty to celebrate. I was going to say under the sun here in Six Rays, but Sue and I are very much in the shelter. And it wouldn't be a rugby match, would it, without a rendition of Sweet Caroline, which the crowd are enjoying here at Six Ways Stadium. Maggie, I know when we were at Northampton Saints for, for the match against the Black Ferns, you went along to watch one of the Inner Warrior camps. What did you make of it? How important is it? It absolutely blew me away to see all these young uh, girls playing the sport, you know, and the numbers of players that there were, and, then, and also today as well. It's all the activation around these games because it's important that we get more young girls to see these top athletes play, and actually that inspires them. And you know, it's a big ambition at the moment for the RFU that come World Cup, hopefully in 2025, if we get that bid, that we'll fill out Twickenham Stadium in the final. Imagine 81,000 people, and hopefully them being young girls or women who want to take up the sport. Yeah. That is the dream, isn't it, to fill out Twickenham for, for England's Red Roses. Marley, are you conscious of being a role model to some of the youngsters watching here today? Yeah, um, and after the match, it's being that part of them, thanking them for coming to watch and just be, being inspiring, not just girls, but young boys as well, anyone. It's just taking the time to actually go and say and thank you. That's a big part for me. Yeah, OK, well, um, Simon Middleton will be probably just bringing his uh, half-time address to, to, to its close. We'll hopefully hear from him in a second. When they've left missed opportunities out there, Maggie, is that going to be the primary focus of what he's talking to them about now? Absolutely. I mean, you, we saw during the game that a couple of times the, the camera went to Simon Middleton and, you know, his face didn't look very happy. Um, <laughs> England are very good at like, scoring tries, but there's definitely three or four that are left behind in that first half, and he's going to want a sharper, more clinical performance in the second half, and I hope that he brings some of those new debutants on as well to give them a go. Yeah, well, we can find out exactly what Simon Middleton has said to his team because he's with Lauren now. Simon, two tries within the first five minutes. Took you a while to get your third. Give me your reflections on that first 40. Yeah, I mean, we started obviously really well. Uh, and then the game got a little bit uh, a little bit bitter, didn't it? Lots of penalties. Uh, so, you know, we got back into it second half. We got so, uh, so back into the first half, got some rhythm into, into the game again. That's what we need to do. So we need to sort the contact area you out, know, both in terms of attack and defence. I think if we can get that bit right, uh, that'll speed the game up. We'll get more tempo into the game. And hopefully we can uh, we can get the crowd out of the seat a little bit more. A word on Abby Dow, scored one try. I think she beat three defenders. Some couldn't get near her, it created the other. One of only two players to start yeah. every match, and you can see why. Yeah, incredible. We put her at full back because we want to see her bring the ball back. First time she got on it, scored a wonder try, which is so she should become a bit of a specialist at doing. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, I think, I think I think USA might kick a little bit more this half with a win, so we might see her on the ball a little bit more. Gales are making their way out. Thank you very much for your time. You. Yep, teams are out. Apparently, teams that wear red win more often. I don't think there's any doubt here that England are going to win, but it's just how they round off their autumn. Let's go back to our commentators, Brian Moore, Natasha Hunt and Sarah Orchard. Thanks, Sonia. We've got a 40-minute party left to go. 
certainly a can't see if you're a fan of England. Might have been a bit of a, a difficult watch if you're a fan of the USA. But England are not number one in the world for nothing. And despite this being a much changed side, they certainly have been in control here at six ways. Helena Rowland gets us back underway. Taken by Alicia Washington, who is actually a Worcester player. So she's very used to her surroundings here. Big hit going in by Maud Muir. Difficult one to get away there for Mackenzie Hawkins. Roland reads well. Still Roland going. Big hand going there to Hamden. Back inside to Tuima. Through one. Harlequins, Lange Tuima. Dotting down. 12 on her back this afternoon. And that is some job done. They managed to score that one with just 40 seconds gone in the second half. This all comes from a bit of disorganization in USA. You see the chase not really on. It's a rushed kick and you do not want to give Helena Rowland any space. She is absolutely brilliant at that shimmy footwork and acceleration away from the mark. Lovely inside support from Lange Tuima. Really, really nice play from England. Well, a superb feat, but the problem with the USA was because they didn't know who was going to receive the ball, it wasn't a planned kick, it was off the cuff, and therefore the chasers weren't able to get up there. Oh, hell of a kick. Well, it was a beautiful handoff by Roland, and then she's just managed to slot the conversion very nicely from the near side. Helena Rowland's done that all day long on the World Series, playing for sevens for many, many years. She does it for Loughborough Lightning as well. And that was great for her to settle her nerves because she's normally better off the tee than she has been. I know she's really hard critic on herself, so good to see her getting hands on ball and running in space. Oh my goodness, Sarah Beckett didn't Stop. catch the ball. Oh. All in slight shock as Rowland actually just uh, kicks out towards the near side. Thanks, Frankie. It is worth mentioning that the USA have only ever beaten England once. It was quite a significant win as well because it was the 1991 World Cup final. If you're going to do it, I can't think of a better time to do it. Oh, just slightly overshot there. Infante with the hack off. Oh, Infante flying up to take her own ball. Cow. Oh, no one at home for all Croft. They're going to go over again. She's got that. Zoe Allcroft, what a week. Nominated as World Player of the Year. Named as the England captain. It was her 25th birthday. And now she's scoring tries. Weeks do not get better than this. Well, Port just tried, but again, problems on the US throw. Mentioned about Hadman having difficulty with their long throw. And there's so much movement in the lineup for it to time that it simply is an overthrow. Yeah, for me, I thought Infante should have kicked this a little bit longer, but it worked absolutely perfectly for her. You see Cobra come in, make the nine pass, and just that fade on the ball, the tip was on. Zoe Allcroft just felt the defence slide off her, and she's very, very speedy. Used to be a fullback back in the day. Really nice finish. Three from six so far for Roland. That one just gone across the front of the posts. Of course, Zoe Harrison is on the bench for England, so it remains 41-0. I think the rest of this second half might be a real test of the USA's character when England are running them in that easily. Substitutions. Wait two, wait three. So and a few changes 14. then coming on for the USA. Looks like Sahir Hamden is going to make her way off. Thanks, They're bringing on uh, Catherine Treader. Also, I can see Nick James is coming on. Okay, it's Charlie Jacoby who's making her way off. And see also jumping away on this near side. Sarah Levy is also on. Roland again. 
It's interesting, England appear to have got quite smart to where the USA are now taking the kick and they've placed Helena Rowland so Sarah Beckett doesn't have to keep running on that ball. It's just an easy exit, isn't it? England's game plan is clearly to kick. Every time they're in their own half, they've set it up every single time they've received that kickoff. So catch the ball, don't even need a pass, don't need a breakdown, just send it straight away. And they're really putting pressure on this line out for USA. Tricky take at the back, but the United States do it as Summer goes forward. Sorry, sorry. Christine Summer, one of a couple of players that are about to join up with Gloucester Hartbury next week after she's finished this period of international rugby. Waters manages to give the ball there to Tampa. Oh. The physicality is just huge, and you can see from Kate Zachary just how hard she's having to work to hold on to the ball. The Mistake there, here comes Cow. she wants it. Infante, Cabea. Tuima. USA defence read that well. Aldcroft. Taking quite a few eagles to bring Allcroft down. Roland. Right through the middle goes Davis. Nice from Millar Mills, who's there in support. Popped up to Infante. They need quick ball. Kabea. Allcroft out to the far side. Can't be taken out there by Thompson. The pass, not quite the catch connection there by Beckett. Awesome. Forward. Scrummer line up. Well, it's a real shame because there were two really good lines cut. That's the first one on the ball, the offload puts it beyond the defence straight away and the ball recycled in the tackle. For me, such good work from Kabea there, just not to carry straight into contact, which is most forwards' first thought when they get ball in hand. Really nice footwork, looking to move it to that space. And Sarah Beckett is all clearly disappointed with that pass. She knows that she's better than that. Really nice to see England trying to keep this ball alive a little bit more, though. Bind! Set! And if you're just tuning in and you're looking at that scoreline, worth saying that England, they're on a 17-match winning run. The last side that beat them were New Zealand back in 2019. USA hack on the ball there through Howard. Dow having to chase that backwards. Oh, she's just turning on the gas. Thompson. Support on her shoulder through Cornbrook. Use it, please. We're saying that Abby Dow has now made over 150 metres in this match. Busy fullback. Kabea to Ema. She just tried to think about getting that last pass. The concern is that England are just trying to force something, but it's Roland. She's away on her own. She's in a league of her own, Roland. Look at that smile. Eight tries for the Red Roses, and we've got over half an hour still to go. I think my smile is as big as Helena Rowland's life right now. Brilliant to see her just play in the way that she plays week in, week out for Loughborough Lightning. Here we see again Abby Dow's break. As you mentioned, over 150 metres made ball in hand. That's an outstanding start. And then this is Helena Rowland at her best, running at defenders one on one. Just unreal footwork. That is so difficult to do, running at that pace as well. She didn't even need a ball transfer. She's that good. In, out, away, Scott free. Superb. Superb to watch. Helena Rowland still very early on in her England career. Only her 10th cap today, made her debut back in November 2020. Just 22 years old. Well, that was worth waiting for. She's 
she seems to only want to convert her own kicks from out wide. <laughs> her own tries, sorry, but just great to see again. You see Kabea trying to keep that ball alive in the wide channels. Just Helena Rowland's acceleration is one of the best in the games for me. So good, gets the ball away. She's so strong and she's just brilliant with her work as well. So passionate, so driven. It's great to see her doing well. Three tries in less than 10 minutes in this second half. Roland not quite as happy as that with that <laughs> exit. Yep. Ball just comes out on this near side. England, substitutions one, three, and four. Few changes here then for England. Big moment as we see Rowena Burnfield come onto the field straight into that line out. Burnfield winning her 50th cap. She's a really popular member of that Red Roses squad. It's taken her two years to wait for this moment. Thank you. Simon Middleton has given her high praise this week, saying it doesn't matter whether she's in the squad or not, she just gives everything in training. A shining example for anyone. As you see, Bottoman also on driving forwards. Taken forward by Levy, another one of the USA Sevens players. Waters eventually gets it, but it's always such slow ball. Messi as well. Can't be taken by far, they see. Advantage over. To Wima. Yeah. The USA just getting a little bit smart there to sometimes when the England players are running at them with that little bit of disguise. Bottoman. Here comes Byrne on the field as well. We've seen her do this throughout the Autumn Nations series. Roland to Aitchison, there's still Cowell out there. This could be her Let's third try on only her second cap. Heather Cowell goes over, she switched wings, it doesn't matter. She's still scoring tries. Well, it doesn't get any easier for the USA, does it? Off goal, first shot, what well, starting in the prompts, and on comes Hannah Butterman, Sarah Byrne, who have started many internationals in their own right and are powerful players, and as you can see, able to make the space and the yards. Really nice set play as well, isn't it? Sarah Beckett going short, Holly Aitchison out the back, two players that had the dream to play for England at Waterloo together. So great to see, and a lovely finish. Ball out in front of Heather Cowell by Holly Aitchison. Got Simon Middleton on his feet as well, which is always nice to see. Point nine. okay, thanks. Well, if the scoreline remains like this, it will be the greatest winning margin that England have had over the USA. The previous record for them was 57-5 back in 2018. Happy, happy England fans. You need three on the end. When you're ready. Few more changes there for the USA. Connect, they're looking to make a change shortly as they're waiting for Jenny Cronish to get on the field, but it's taken forward now by Hawkins. Rolling to Dow. Oh, good hand on that by Treader. Dow gets another bite. Infante to Tuima. Nice little show there. Kayla Kinnett's had a pretty good game for the USA and what has been difficult for them. This time, Fatavesi. 
She had a little bit of time in the first half when Megan Foster had to go off, but this is all backwards from the USA. Back foot, please. Nick James, then. First real time we've got to see the sale player on the ball. Kicked on once again by Howard. Howard can play 10 or 12, but here comes down. Oh, she's running over the top of them now. Behave, Abby Dow. Yeah. It's still Matthews, this time bottom and out to Aitchison. Thompson. It is absolutely fierce, some of these collisions. Burnfield was on the shoulder there. Cabea has to do a big tidying up job. Infante thought about going quickly, changed her mind. Decisions, decisions. Of course, Infante, she is the vice captain of the Roses today. This is an example of what I'm saying for the USA. See, there's no England player in that rock. One, two, three, four, five, six players for the USA. And eight. Substitution. Great. There you go, a couple of changes then. Jenny Cronash is on the United States. Sarah Beckett is coming off. And the familiar face of the regular England captain, Sarah Hunter, coming onto the field. Her 130th cap today. She's closing in on that all-time record of Rocky Clark's 137. Here's Bottomman. Oh, look at Bird. There's no stopping her. What a powerful woman. Running out of superlatives for the efforts that she, she has put in throughout this autumn campaign. This is two super subs at their finest. First of all, Hannah Bottomman, leg drive around the breakdown. And then look at that. You can see the determination on Sarah Burns' face. Rowena Burnfield as well, adding her weight. That's half a try for her as well, but lovely finish. Well, Bottomman and Burns sounds like a firm of solicitors, doesn't it? Far from that. Good for Ronan, and that brings up 60. England are scoring tries quicker than the clock. It's so tough, isn't it, for this USA Eagles team when you're looking at this bench coming on as well. Sarah Hunter on her 130th cap, more caps than the whole of the starting forward pack combined for USA. Players like Sarah Byrne, players like Hannah Bottomman. It's crazy to think the strength and depth that this England side have. Ten tries now for England. Right, this is a big opportunity for the USA. They need to keep their heads. It's a wonderful field position. What's the decision? Thanks. Howard just kicks towards the near corner, and this is going to be a huge test of the USA lineup. Here we are. So foot well, right first there. of all, I'd like to see them give the hooker a throw that she can make. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, it's Treader who's putting it in now. They go towards the back. It's Bitsy Cairns. She can't take it. It's Hunter. Thank you. I'll just play out from that. USA have been tying themselves up in knots at that line out, this whole fixture, and it's cost them. Well, this is where you've got to be pragmatic. I don't care what the textbook says or the coaching yes. manual that you have to have <laughs> ball at the back. This is the fourth throw that's gone wrong for them. And they need to change that. Going to 
do it again and again. They can't take. Not learning the lessons, so Sarah Byrne says, let me deal with this for you. To Ema, Aitchison. Aitchison straightening up our line, and then goes back inside. She fancies this herself. Oh, she popped off the ball, but she popped it off to the Eagles. Somehow, Thompson's ended up with it. Aitchison, Cabea. Cabea used to be very good at athletics. Bit of shot put, bit of hammer. Rugby now certainly her game. Bottoman. Still Bottoman. Passes it to Davis. Muir is there, but then so is the USA. No, no, it's coming. Back to the penalty. I just feel like that ball could have gone a little bit earlier, both from Hannah Bottoman and both from Lark Davis. Who you see, really good work to get it out. And then Bottoman, really nice carry. If that ball goes earlier, almost like two goes at it. Same with Lark Davis. You've got players on the outside in acres of space without anyone in front. Potentially a little bit of white line fever now coming into this England attack. The thing is, when clocks get in space, they like it. And they want to just keep going. Right then, this is textbook, this is flying. And Davis. She is over. Try number 11. The crowd at Six Ways are loving this. Perhaps not the USA fans who are sprinkled across the crowd there. Well, Simon Middleton said it, didn't he, at half time? We want to try and get this Six Way crowd on their feet. They certainly are doing this. Absolutely rampant, this English attack. Really nice drills again. You see Alex Matthews at the front turning the corner. Sarah Hunter, nice and tight. Everyone in there. Lark Davis, hands on ball. She knows that all too well. You know, to a certain extent, the USA are paying for not being cynical. In the men's game, they just pulled that down and given a, uh, you know, given a penalty away. conversion for Roland but some big moments coming up now we can see coming on the field Connie Powell is on for a debut as is Lucy Packer for the Red Roses it's been a good afternoon for those women but also Zoe Harrison and Ellie Kildan come onto the field things might have just got a little bit more complicated for the United States when you're bringing those big names on Hunter Sarah Hunter always makes her a peanut butter and jam sandwich whenever she gets ready to play. Has to be done at a certain time and she's being powered by them now as Cabea goes forward. Packer to Roland. Hunter again. I'm assured by Natasha Hunt, ideally it has to be a roll as well, not an actual sandwich. Yeah, and about two hours before kickoff. Yes, it's very, very exact. To here's Packer! Lucy Packer, the Harlequin scrum half. She's not been on the pitch a minute. She's flying towards the line, loses it forward in the tackle. Advantage. Leave it now. No advantage coming. Knocked on. Scrum. Yeah, really nice spot by Packer. You just see her eyes forward the whole time. USA don't have anyone in at that guard position right next to the ruck, so easy meters, but... Hands up. Unfortunate for her, just loses it in the contact. What is making it worse for the USA is that not only has the uh, bench got talent, but it's thoroughly familiar with all the systems. So when they come on, it's seamless. It's not as if new caps are coming on and things might go a little bit wrong with, with timing. They're fitting effortlessly in, and they're playing against tired players now. And the, 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 aggregate, the aggregate effect is huge. We'll do it next time, it's too late. And there's Hunter just packing down at the back there. Crouch! Worth mentioning Lucy Packer, you can just see they're hanging around the back of the scrum. She actually played sevens for Wales. Set! An interesting decision she made. She was started out at the Amman Valley. It's the same rugby club that Shane Williams 
a Welsh international made his name there. The United States have it, but this is all at the wrong end of the field for them. And it's stolen by Bottoman. Passed out wide. The fly through Aitchison. She should have given the pass. Eventually it does go to Thompson. She touches down, but was her foot in touch? They will most probably go and have a little look. Lovely work from Bottoman. Really, really nice play earlier. I said she should have passed it, but here we see, first of all, the rip. Connie Powell, great accuracy. Pops into Hannah Bottoman's hands, and then here, lovely pass out in front of Zoe Harrison. The backs will be proud of that. Don't think Aitchison knew Thompson was outsider until she'd taken that contact, and again, really nice finish from Lydia Thompson. So powerful and a great finish. Well, they have just looked up at the big screen at that just to check on Lydia Thompson's feet. She has gone over for a brace on her 50th cap. Not a bad afternoon's work so far. Well, when you're looking at the work Hannah Bottoman did, not just the run, what about that pass? Full tilt right in front of the player. Yeah, she's an absolute baller. Outstanding rugby ability, really nice. Linking up with her Saracens teammate, and here you see Holly Aitchison, you saw her look, takes the contact, but manages to keep the ball alive, which is what you want to see in those wide channels. Yeah, that was you, Lydia Thompson. She's pointing at herself. <laughs> Two tries, well done. Happy times. She's one of the best humans I've ever been in a squad with, is Lydia Thompson. That score line is slightly scary if you are a United States player or anyone who might come across these red roses over the next year. Of course, remember that next year is a World Cup year. I'd just love to see them mixing up these kickoffs. They've had plenty of kickoffs now. They're going to exactly the same place every time. Helena Rowland's kicking it straight out. They're challenging, competing at the line out, which USA can't win. Why not go and try and get the ball back? You've got nothing to lose. I think the USA line-out uh, might be one just to forget for this whole fixture. Seven line-outs lost throughout this fixture. Has not been their friend. Great take by Roland. Advantage. Packer. Penalty advantage. And touchdown. They'll come back, though. I mentioned, of course, it is a... World Cup year next year. Worth mentioning that England, they are bidding to host the 2025 Women's Rugby World Cup. While the USA, they're going to be bidding as well. They would like to host the 2029 version. There has been a Women's World Cup in Canada before, but not in the USA. Yeah, it'll be great to see. Especially, you see what England have done in this autumn in particular. They've moved it around the country. We're seeing brilliant attendances at each of the grounds important that other nations start to follow suit on that as well well that's the point it's not for england to dumb down it's for other nations to invest in their women's games and get up to standard here comes burn again out then to aldcroft looking for the option still flying through burn again bottom out zachary just battling away on the floor with her, all cropped again. Is that over? Short. Recycled, Short. back round the other side. This time, it's Connie Powell. Is that over? Connie Powell on her debut. Simon Middleton knows what that will mean to the Gloucester Hartbury hooker. Connie Powell, she moved from Suffolk to Hartbury College to pursue her rugby dream while it's paying off today. It's just brilliant to see. Last season, she got injured first game of the season. She was in and around the England squad and then only came back for the last game. So to see her out here again, her first cap is just fantastic. Again, you see ball being kept alive, really strong carries and latch from Alex Matthews, but Connie Powell was always scoring that. Great to see her face after as well.
But when you consider, you've got Connie Powell there, she didn't start, Mark Davis did, Erica Kane, you know, the, the strength in depth, three very, very good hookers. Saracens, Zoe Allcroft, second conversion of the match. And that's one on the board for her. Now up to 77-0 for the Roses. Great to see Connie Powell's face as she came up on that. in the 2019 Six Nations. England didn't bring up over 80 over Scotland, so this could be a record breaker. Always worth reminding ourselves at this moment that on the field, Simon Middleton did release from the England cap this week. Toppy Cleal, Abby Ward, Marley Packer and Amy Cocaine. So this is not the strongest England 15, but they are none too shabby. Oh, Rowena Burnfield, has she got away with that one? Referee must have been happy that it was out. It's all tees there going in to gather, hacked on there by James. Harrison. Almost looking to try and run round the USA players. I think the Red Roses must be sensing they're tired. Be tired physically and mentally when you're facing this kind of, let's face it, hammering. That's what I want to see from England, though. They have a crack, they see if they can move it wide, get anywhere with running ball in hand. It's not really gone anywhere, so Helena Rowland just sits back in the pocket, Lucy Packer hits her, and now they've got the exit that they want. going to come towards this near side and they'll set up for the line out no pressure at all on this USA line out but I think there might even be a big cheer if they actually manage to win one not to be taken though by Alex Matthews one of the 2014 World Cup winners still in this England squad for the USA here. Thank you. Yeah, bring it back. Great work over the ball. Ortiz just goes and gets the ball. Great work over the ball. Got in a position, got set. England couldn't move her. Well, Howard sends it down this near side. I mean, there is the question about how much of an advantage yeah, a line-out is to the USA right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's just the defensive work from England. You see people in that channel the whole time. They're so well drilled. They're reading the movement really, really well. And when they don't read the movement, the throw's just not on the money at all. Line-outs need work. We saw the same happen to New Zealand earlier in the Autumn Nations campaign. It's just really difficult to get a foothold in a game if you can't maintain your set piece. Well, it's impossible. It's impossible. Harrison, who of course is playing in that first receiver position now that she's come on the field. Almost, nobody almost wants to take it on. Hacked on in the end by Mackenzie Hawkins. That's a pretty good touch for the USA. But we have to say, I don't know if you're a United States fan, if you can actually watch what's about to come next. Now just watch this line out. See if there's any movement, see how many things the hooker has to accommodate. No, it's an England throw, so it will go well. Ball gonna come in there by Connie Powell. England uh, making far less drama out of their line out work, just getting it done. Important for Powell to nail that one as well. Her first throw of the game, first throw in her England career. Thank you. 
we've seen that she can do the powerful work, the scoring tries, the leg drive through contact. So important that the basics get done as well. And that one was on the money, so she'll be happy with that. Six. Deep breath, everyone. Oh, my goodness. I'm not sure what more we can say now. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results. Didn't realise you're a quote man, Brian. England have made over a thousand metres in this match. If you don't follow rugby, that's a lot. Harrison. Bit of a contest on the ball there. Probably over the last few minutes, Simon Middleton will be a bit worried about how long the Red Roses have spent playing at the wrong end of the field. Kill done. Hacker finds Kabea. Worth mentioning that Lucy Packer is not a relation of Marley Packer. Bottom in. She has done that every time she's got her hands on the ball. That ball's out. Packer has to gather again. <laughs> USA penalty. And England cannot get out of their own half as Zachary yeah. takes it quickly. Ortiz manages to find Cronish. Slow, slow ball. Okay. Washington. Okay, the referee's going to have a little word. Let's listen in. Tackle off the ball. Penalty only. What was the number? White 17. 17. So, white 17, tackle off the ball. Penalty against. We'll go stay time off for the injury. Okay, so it's a penalty. Interesting for me as well. The tackle off the ball was actually on Hannah Bottomman. So, if you're going to choose to hit someone, I'm not sure yeah, Hannah Bottomman would be the one. But going back to your point earlier, oh, here's, here we see it. Just bottom and coming through. Great. Time's back on. Trying to make a mess of that, and you can just see the frustration coming in. Not oh, sure Bottomman needs to go back out, her, back at her like that, but she's a feisty player, is Bottomman. Just going back to your point earlier, over a thousand metres made by England. They've also kicked out of hand 22 times. So it's not like they're trying to run any, everything back at all. It's absolutely outstanding, Outside outstanding stats. Most of which have come from Abby Dow, to be fair. Can I just make a point about the, the USA lineouts? They are falling into the trap uh, of vernacular wisdom, which says things like front ball, middle ball is no good because you need to throw the ball to the tail so that it entertains, def entertains defenders out wide. Well, I'll tell you what, not having the ball doesn't entertain any defenders at all. So win it first. Maybe Ortiz gets the ball in. Scrum much better from the United States compared to the line-out efforts. Zachary. Ortiz wants it. Feed down the line from Kronish. Ortiz again, Howard. Still Howard. Comes back in the end to Summers. Look at the counter working from England. Still, the USA hold on to it as Bitsy Cairns goes forward. Scored a try against Ireland last week. Only a fit cap, absolute poacher. Well, when the USA thought it couldn't get worse, something like that happens. And yes, you have to feel sorry for them, but you have to say that England, in the second half, have done exactly what Simon Middleton wanted. They've been much more clinical, they've taken these chances, they've been much more accurate, they've had much more discipline.
just a word on that pickup as well. It was around her shins. She's running, trying to make a tackle, made the read on the off, on the intercept, picked it up and then had the turn of pace as well to go all the way. Brilliant bit of skill from Holly Aitchison. Well, they've switched back to Helena Rowland taking this kick on the near side. Oh, the ball just fell there. Go again. Yeah, yeah. You should. I'm not sure she's allowed to do that. Well, I think that completely put Helena Rowland off. And when you look at that scoreline, this is the biggest scoreline that England have had for 10 years. Worryingly, there's still two minutes to play. Sometimes you don't know what to say, do you? Once again, Roland just pushes it down. Hawkins finds Zachary. Zachary just can't quite take it. It is cold out there. I'm surprised there hasn't been more drop balls this afternoon. Still loose, taken this time by Levy. Summer. Messy ball has been knocked on. There is still time for a scrum, but high time for us, Natasha Hunt, to get your player of the match. Yeah, for me, there's been some outstanding performances across the board for this England team. Sadia Kabea, I think, has been brilliant in the seven shirt. 78 metres made, eight tackles, and she really has come to life in this game. Helena Rowland as well has looked sharp, but Abby Dow, that lady on the screen, she has been everywhere. 193 metres made, ball in hand. She's been amazing across the Autumn Series, and she is fully deserving of this today. A very popular choice there in the crowd as well, as they are told as well. He's smiling, he's nodding. Nice to get agreement there from the England coach. <laughs> 30 seconds left to go. Will England have one last say on that scoreboard? Could it be the USA? 79 minutes says maybe not. Our well, referee says that that's gone out the tunnel, so got a bit of nice tussle here. Nice to see the USA still fighting for this. Yeah, it's what you need from a coach. Thank you. You can see that the body language is still positive. They're still clapping. They're still trying to g each other up, which is so important. You can't coach heart and you can't coach spirit, and they're two things that every coach looks for. Crouch. Binds. Chess, Chess, Meyer. Ready? Set! Packer gets it in. They need to hook that back. It's gone down. It's Hunter hard. has it. Referee happy for them to play. Down. Oh, the handoff. Eventually she's scragged. Just adding a few more meters to the uh, Dow log. to Harrison, Burnfield. Harrison again. Oh, nice to burn. Will they finish with more points? Kill Dunn was there quickly. Powell. And towards Dow again. Still going. She doesn't mind a bit of contact. Pow to bottom. Takes a couple of defenders with her. Saracen's fly half gives it to Harlequin's fullback kill done.
motorways is something special. To be fair, hats off to the DJ, whoever has put this song on now, because it's completely appropriate, absolutely outstanding from Sarah Byrne. It's a really nice initial break from Sarah Byrne. Lovely footwork and offload out of contact from Harrison. Burn again, great work on the floor to keep that ball alive and it's only appropriate that she gets involved second time, hands on ball, just shakes as if she's going to pass. Lovely step off the inside and no one's stopping her there. Just emphasises the depth in the England squad. Completes a very good performance. Unfortunately, the USA just didn't want, well, they made their own problems as well. Had they had a bit of a line-out ball, we might have seen a little bit more of a contest. They couldn't do that. Not England's fault. England put them away professionally, did the job with a lot and lots of talent. Great to see. Great to watch. The final whistle has gone. It is an autumn nation's clean sweep for England. The Red Roses are unbeaten in 18, and they equal their greatest ever scoreline in an international. It's finished. England 89, USA nil. Well, there you go. They know that this has been a very special autumn series for the Red Roses. There's still a year to go to the World Cup, but what a marker that has been laid down to the whole world. Certainly New Zealand are not up with England at the moment. Worth mentioning that France are the only team at the moment that seem to be able to give England a game as the USA just gather themselves and realize they've got quite a mountain to climb. Natasha Hunt, we have to remind ourselves when we talk about this England performance, that was not even England's strongest 15 and 23 out in the field today. Yeah, it's outrageous to think of the talent that still aren't playing. You've got Emily Scarrett and Amber Reid, who haven't even featured in this autumn series, who are both fantastic in their own right. Poppy Cleal, Abby Ward, both have captained England as well, that aren't out there with their leadership. It's just crazy to think where this side can go and I can't see anyone stopping them at the moment. Brian Moore, it, was a, it didn't appear to be a risk as we look at it now for Simon Middleton to come in and make so many changes, but what does this say about the depth there is currently in England women's rugby? Well, you can see the benefits of professionalism, you can see the benefits of a thorough coaching team looking to all aspects and the hard work of the players because whatever changes have been made, they haven't affected England's efficacy. Wait, the transition <laughs> from reserves, finishers or whatever, from starters, and even players who've come in from, you know, from outside the match day 23s into this one, have all done the job and all done it properly. Well, we might just have to wait a second for Abby Dow because England are actually just having a little bit of a moment here, um, just gathering themselves before they go and speak to their loved ones in the crowd. Remember, they've been in quite a bubble. Uh, I think they've only had one day at home throughout this campaign. But Simon Middleton is speaking to them, knowing what they have done, but what is still to come. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, full credit to everyone that's behind the Allianz Premier 15s in this country, because that is what is driving this standard. I know we can talk about professionalism, we can talk about contracts, but ultimately, week in, week out, these players are with clubs that are driving that standard. And the games themselves are probably more competitive than what we've seen today. And that's not to take anything away from USA. That's not to take anything away from the other international teams. But the standard this league is going in is crazy. And it's, a, it's great to be part of it. I should also mention that if you want more women's rugby today, Wales will be taking on Canada. That one gets underway at 5 o'clock on BBC Two Wales. But the celebrations will continue here at Six Ways as we look to speak to all the coaching staff about what this autumn has meant. And also where the Red Roses go from here when it comes to the Six Nations campaign. There'll probably be a few summer internationals as well in the build-up to that World Cup, which is, of course, in New Zealand next year. What a time to come and watch women's rugby. 
glad they brought their bobble hats because there is certainly a little bit of a nip in the air here today. You can see how long the Red Roses spend out on the field because they do spend up to an hour out there signing autographs, having photographs. Let's hope that they have lots of those nice, long, warm jackets. Right then, let's head down to pitch side to Lauren Jenkins, who's with the player of the match, Abby Dow. And she cannot wipe that smile off her face. Abby Dow, four out of four, clean sweep of wins this autumn. How does it feel to finish the campaign with that sort of statement on the scoreboard? I mean, we, we rarely often play four games in a row, so to be able to go out there and perform like that and actually keep the tempo that we wanted and continue to build within a game is just incredible. So the score, the score is just once again another bonus. Talk us through your week, nominated for World Rugby try of the season. You started this game with another sensational effort. <laughs> Thank you. How does it feel to be playing with that sort of form 12 months out from a World Cup? Um, I mean, it's been a long process. It's normally four years, but we managed to get an extra one because of COVID. And it's just shown through like all the training that we're doing, it's finally paying off. Like The league is paying dividends as well. It's just incredible to see and be able to perform. Competition is rife in this squad, perhaps as rife as it's ever been, but you've started the four games. How much can you take from that? You've seen players play in different positions, you've moved across the back line. Um, very encouraging given where this squad is, given how much depth Simon Middleton has to deal with. Yeah, I mean, the depth is definitely highlighted. Um, we'll be able to shift plays, have completely different teams almost come out and actually mixture of like many to a few caps so to be able to see people on their debuts performing as well as people in over 100 caps is incredible and it's just the depth is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy tonight, you deserve a break Abby, oh, thank you for your time. Very much. It's been quite a weekend for England fullbacks, hasn't it? Freddie Stewart at Twickenham yesterday was player of the match, Abby Dow here today. Maggie Alfonsi, the red roses are blooming, sorry I couldn't resist that. How impressive were they? Oh, really impressive. And it's quite interesting because uh, Mo Hunt mentioned in commentary, we talk a lot about the weakness of the opposition, you know, they're not as strong. But you've got to look at the England side at the moment. They are getting stronger and stronger. And there's so many players in that squad who you can look at and say they are going to kick on. Um, look, I feel really sorry for the USA. They've come off the back of a, what has been a long tour and they've got some good players and some good talent. But this team will only grow. But England should be really proud of what they've achieved over this last four tests because they can only get better. And look, the likes of Marley Packer is even in the team. And I bet she, was, she would have loved to have been out there, wouldn't you? Well, that was my next question. You were a bit green around the gills that you weren't out there getting your hands on the ball. Yeah, obviously, but look, the girls put in a sensational performance. Uh, the bench coming up, Sarah Byrne, Hannah Bottomman, uh, Sarah Hunter, and Connie Powell getting a try on her first cap. Like, it was phenomenal and just really enjoyable to watch. Uh, it's been a long time coming, as in the four games build up, we've kept on, the tempo's kept on, and yeah, no, it's been really good to watch. Mentally, how hard is it when you are that dominant, do you think, to keep setting yourself the standard all the time not just overall but within an 80 minutes like that well i think it's really hard i don't know what you think marley but i mean it's you know you reach a point where you go you're just scoring lots of tries yeah. and there's times when you take your foot off the pedal and then all of a sudden the opposition come back in but england just kept pushing more on that pedal uh, and then the bench came on and they set another standard and it almost just as if um england just kept believing that they can score i mean i thought they were going to reach century i'll be honest with you i honestly thought they were going to get 100 um, points but it, it shows the mentality of this england side and marley you know it's like when you're starting to win you've got to keep it going aren't you yeah and i think if you look at the, probably the last 10 minutes of the game we did play a lot of rugby in our own half we needed to make sure that actually uh, we kicked long and we had a good chase, but really we played a little bit too much rugby where we wouldn't normally. But they kicked it, USA kicked it back to us. Helena called the mark, and yeah, it was really smart play just to re, re get everyone back together, back focused to what we should be doing. Well, a big day this week, isn't it? Being for, for Zoe Allcroft, she's a 25th birthday, nominated for World Player of the Year uh, and captain of England. And she's talking to Lauren. So you were a clear favourite going into this, but how does it feel to, to finish that match with such a convincing win and such an impressive performance? Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. We spoke before the, before the match about sticking to our process, being direct, changing nothing, and I think we did that today. I know you've talked about it this week, but where does where do the last seven days rank in your career? You've obviously been nominated for World Rugby Player of the Year. You're today captain in your country. Gosh, has it started to sink in yet? Um, not really. Um, like, it's been an amazing week. Um, 
Um, and I literally one of the best years of my life. And to captain today, the girls were amazing. So. You're clearly very emotional. So is it perhaps just now that the campaign's finished, you're perhaps able to really appreciate what you've done? You've gone from the mental challenge of facing the Black Ferns, where you know there wasn't as much expectation today, being clear, clear favourites against America, but you've dealt with that mental pressure along the way. Um, yeah, definitely. Like we haven't really thought about it. Like like I said, every single week we've been building sticking on our process, doing what we can control, and I think that's helped us today to keep focused of going forward and getting as big a win as we did today. And now you've had a taste of captain in your country, would you like to do it again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy this evening. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yes, please. How polite is that? I think actually, to be oh. fair, let's ask Simon Middleton was, was flagging her up this week, wasn't he, as somebody who could be a future England captain. Do you see that in her, Maggie? Most definitely. I mean, do you know, just watching that, and I was holding back the tears. And, oh. and, you know, and it, I think it's really important for the viewers to see that, to recognise what it means to a player, to captain their country. Only very few people get to do it in their career. And, you know, Zoe Olcroft has had that chance, and she should be really proud of that because she stepped up, the players stepped up around her, uh, and and it was just an impressive display by her and many others. Yeah, and it was just raw and honest. Like, you got to think, she's come off the back of four weeks of being in camp. We've only been released for 24 hours in four weeks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she's probably... The whole week's got to her, and then every emotion's just come out in that interview. And, like, she's been phenomenal for the last four games, and I take my hat off to her, and I'm super proud of the performance she's put in, but the performance all the girls are put in tonight. Lovely smile from her. She was one of the uh, try scorers for the Red Roses. And look, there's so many tries. We, don't go, we could be here all night if we tried to look at them all, but let's have a look at the first three. It was Lange Tuima who set England on their way in this uh, second half. Yeah, if anything, it was a bit of a loose kick, and it went straight down the throat to Roland and Roland look stepped up today at 10 her quick feet but looking for the support back inside I've seen this a lot with England over the last four tests it's that follow-up support line and Tuima played 13 last weekend and stepped up at, at 12 um, but then again we look at Oldcroft we said about her being the captain and leading by example oh my god what a way to lead by example by scoring a phenomenal try and to be honest she could have been quite easily well ahead and scoring two more tries um, but it is cont continued continuity from England Roland again showing her foot, footwork her pace and again just to almost back herself it, again England are very good at this when they start to get almost on the front foot they almost start to try things and, and take teams on and it's just superb play by her and many others it seems Marley that England have this sort of almost this all-court game that the forwards as much as anything which is where you normally are are, are encouraged to, to carry to pass to kick as much as anything are, are you all just you know frustrated centers I don't know yeah no uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> no but like the ball skills like Hannah Bottoman putting the ball across for um, Holly Atchison to then hit Lydia on the, the try. Um, I just think we're all good ball players. It doesn't matter where we are in the positions. We hold edge, we know our plan, we've got good hands, and yeah, the skills are really good for us. So it doesn't matter where we are on the pitch, we can we can get it across. Also the footwork, uh, Sadia today, like there was a couple times she could have just ran it into contact, but she put some footwork in, she offloaded, and it's just great in space, keeping the ball alive. And that's what we want, because England, if you look over these last four matches, it's been really high ball in play time and actually that's what we want we want to run the legs off of our opposition we want to play fast ball and we want to keep it in do you know what you also mentioned about leaders i think what's great about this team is that yeah you know uh, middleton can highlight different people to be captains but there's so many players in this squad who are stepping up to the plate i mean at one stage my i think you're going to be a captain i think you've got the potential <laughs> you, um, i mean could you talk a lot but no just joking <laughs> i'm just joking i think it's great to see that there's so many players stepping up and when they get the ball in hand that they can back themselves so look this team can only keep getting better yeah so should we see some more tries because there, there were there, there were there were a few maggie yeah there was i mean cow i mean look she scored two tries on debut um uh, last weekend and look at her now she steps it up and she backs herself and scores another very good try i mean she's someone who's come through the ranks has been Pop playing really well at, at harlequins um but just the gas and the pace to really come away for a third try on a second cap. Um, and this next try by Byrne, uh, she is what we call the human pinball. And people are just dropping off her and, and Rowena Byrne for also supporting her in that one. And look, we talked a lot as well about the England's driving mall and Davis doesn't get a lot of credit for some of the, some of the things that she does. But getting on the back of that for her second try, 
just again shows England's dominance in the set piece. And I think there with the set piece, it just shows how much England have come on. Like we've got a new forwards head coach in, uh, Deeks, great guy. And but sometimes it, it, it's about like we've all bought into the new structures, the way we want to play. And I think you see that both in the scrum and in the line out. We are a functioning forwards. So like we say, we're good around the park, ball handling, running. But actually our set piece is becoming dominant again. Like we've given a couple of free kicks away in both. Today we gave one away and in the last game we gave that's okay. That's what we don't mind that if we're doing what we're saying we're doing, going out there. It's nice to see the players are still here going around the pitch at Six Ways Stadium, signing those autographs, posing for those selfies. We're going to see some more tries because uh, England scoring 15 today and, and, and in a short while we'll be joined by Simon Middleton. He'll give us his impression of uh, the England performance today. But come on, Maggie. Uh, well, look, I'm going to talk about Thompson. Uh, again, we talked about her getting a 50th cap today, and she's got two tries today. I actually think she could have potentially got a hat-trick. Um, but she was, again, showing her form, and Davis again. Look, I'm just going to go on. There's too many tries to keep explaining. They're all performing really well. It's, I mean, look, England, again, didn't drop their level of ability. And, and I think this try, I have to say, from Powell, getting her debut try was really exciting. And, and then Lucy Packett also coming on. But Aiton stepping up, you know, yeah. Marley, you've seen her perform at Saracens. How pleased were you to see her score yeah, a try? Yeah, honestly, she's, she's been great this season for Saracens. She's coming off the back of uh, the Olympics, fitted straight into Saracens, but then here, stepping up. Obviously, Emily Scarrett, we've said it before, big shoes to fill, but actually, she's done that. She's been incredible this series. Uh, and then to get that try at the end there, yeah, really good pickup by her. Hello, Simon. <laughs> And as promised, Simon Middleton, uh, England head coach, has joined us. We've just been watching a repeat of, of your tries today. There's, there were a lot of them. You got a favourite? <laughs> oh, uh, Abby, Abby Dow's first one was pretty special, wasn't it? Uh, I'll tell you what I really enjoyed. Uh, Ollie Aitchison's one at the end because she's defended brilliantly all tournament and she's, she's got up into the defensive, the attacking line, she's pressured space and uh, you know that that was a really smart try that she scored there but yeah that you can take your pick couldn't you, the last one as well you know just to show the, the discipline to keep the ball and finish off, uh, yeah it was, a, it was a pretty good second half show for sure. It's been quite the autumn, Simon, for the Red Roses. How has it, this month exceeded your expectations in terms of what your team have produced? Yeah, I think it has, to be absolutely honest. Uh, you know, we had, we had high hopes of what it was going to be like, uh, but I just said this to, to the girls in the circle, I, I think we've, you know, we've, we've not just moved our game on, I think we've moved the women's game on over the last month. And we've shown, uh, you know, we've shown what's possible if you if you back the girls and you provide the resources, put them in the right environment. Uh, they're just fantastic players, and you know, they're full credit to them because you know you've got to take the opportunities that are put in front of you. And as we've said repeatedly, you know, the RFU have backed us fantastically well. We've, we've taken the opportunity, or we certainly after this this point. And what does it say about the strength in depth that you are clearly developing? That we can borrow your Marley Packer here today, and it, and the Red Roses don't miss a beat. Yeah, no, I hope she's gone all right for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she, she's, she's been yeah, great. Yeah, brilliant. You know, and and, and sure, you know, we've got two fantastic sevens here, and then you've got Sadia Kabea, who was absolutely brilliant today. Uh, and then yeah, like you say, we you know, we, we 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 released Poppy and Abby and. Uh, at the start of the week with Marley and Amy Kikane and, and then we still come up with a great performance. So we've got great strength in depth. We've taken some time to build, you know, it's, a, it's been a, a five, six, seven year project. And what we've got to do is make sure we continue that now. And that's what we're trying to do. You know, Connie Powell comes on and, and scores a try. And uh, Lucy, I thought Lucy Pack was fantastic. You know, what a cameo, 20 minutes, she just ripped it up. So, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely heading in the right direction. So, Simon, how important was it to finish on a high? You know, you've got the Six Nations, which are still trying to confirm uh, what the format is going to be there, and then obviously potentially some stuff in the summer. How important was that victory to go into what is going to be a really busy Ab year? Absolutely massive, Maggie. We said before we left, we left the hotel, we have to finish on our terms, and our terms looked, it wasn't just about winning, it was how we won. Uh, you know, we talked about finishing our... I set plays off, about finish that fight, face play off, executed. Uh, you know, and, and uh, USA made it, made it difficult. Uh, you know, they attacked the breakdown and they made it messy. And uh, we had to really sort of scrap and sort ourselves out. But yeah, it was it was huge, 
hugely important for us that we finished on the on the right terms and we did and I'm really pleased about that. Now look, we've seen that you've scored lots of tries, 15 in total today, it's been quite the autumn but how pleasing was it as a former defence coach yourself that you came here today and, and the USA who what top six side just didn't get a point on the board? Yeah, I, I, I said to Deeks right at the end, I said we're, we're probably overlooking it a little bit but we've... we've uh, Right, We're just yeah. showing some of your, your England's perfect defence here. Yeah, we we defended fantastically well, uh, and sometimes you know when you get when you get that many uh, that many tries, you sort of overlook a little bit of the defensive bit. But we were aggressive in defence, and we contested. We didn't contest the breakdown well enough in the first half. We talked about that at half time. We said to be we needed to be in a little bit quicker, uh, and we got that in the second half. But ultimately, your defence shows the desire of a side. And the very last thing we talked about was playing with, de with desperation before we left, and that shows in your defence. And we were really desperate when they had the ball not to let them score. And, and so, yeah, again, massive part of our game. We could actually pick out any one player, any number of players here today that could have been player of the match, but it went to Abby Dow, for, who was, had a tremendous game at fullback. What a little star you've got there. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, we, we, we stuck it at fullback. You know, Scott has been pushing me for a bit to play it at fullback. So just to uh, yeah, ju just to give her an opportunity to run run some uh, loose ball and uh, yeah, I mean she showed what she what she can do and but we got you know we got a few players who can do that we got we got some great pace and you know how loose even how strong she is she's so you can see there just how strong she is uh, yeah we have got some good attacking weapons for sure and uh, I thought special mention for our skipper today uh, I thought Zoe, Zoe Allcroft was just immense. Uh, you know, she led the side fantastic all, all week, and uh, I thought she just she did exactly what she does today, which is lead from the front. Marley Packer, future England captain, you've been showing it around this autumn. Sorry, good. I, I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> what she said, she wants a captain. Uh, <laughs> what do you reckon, Marley? Go on, tell her. Yeah, she probably would have been if she'd have been in camp this week. Got <laughs> <laughs> to select me first. <laughs> Can I just say, you know, it's clear that what is happening here with the women's game, particularly in England, the RFU have invested very heavily, both in England and the club game. Are you frustrated a little bit that, that the rest are lagging behind? Yeah, uh, but, I mean, we're moving at a bit of a pace, to say the least. <laughs> at the end of the day, all we can do is, is, is sort of look after our side of things. But, yeah, you, you, you look at the men's game yesterday, and you've got you've got three games, four games, who are so competitive uh, every game, and that and that's what you want. That's got, that's what's going to fill stadiums out, big stadiums out. And uh, so from that point of view, yeah, it would be great to see uh, you know more competitive sides. And, and so you know, the, it's a bit like the gauntlets down there. You know, you, everybody's got. I think France are doing a great job. You know, you can see that they, they're massively committed to, to their, their their women's international game. And uh, and everybody else has got to follow suit. I'm sure New Zealand will go away, have a close look and come back. They'll be strong when we get to, to the World Cup. Hopefully Canada will get on the back of what's been a, you know, a good few weeks for them uh, and people will keep, keep pushing through. Simon, is there ever a fear though, because you're winning so well, that you could go into a, a World Cup almost being slightly underprepared because you're not getting the competition that you want? No, I, th I think we, we learned that lesson in 2017, didn't we, Marley? We, 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 we peaked a bit too early. We didn't. We didn't get our our recovery right. We didn't get our tapering quite right, uh, and we just we we just sort of gone over the edge, I think. But we've got another 11 months. We had three months before we went to uh, we, we went into the last World Cup. We got we got 11 months, so we can we can you know there's the rest of the season, the domestic season to finish. There'll be some great games at the end of that. There's the Six Nations to go, and then the, the girls have got a five-week summer break. Uh, and then we can we can come back into camp and we can we can build up and we get make sure we get that bit right. So you know, we won't we won't make that mistake again. And Simon, have Alex... you got your? Sorry, Marley, I was just going to say because we've got to we've got to let Simon go. Have you got your mantelpiece dusted? You know, ready to put the gong on it for what for coach of the year? <laughs> sorry, sorry, say that again. I'm just saying, have you got your mantelpiece all dusted and ready <laughs> to put the gong on for coach of the year? <laughs> I I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not entering into that. Oh, good one. I'm just yeah. ma I'm massively privileged to, to be <laughs> to be nominated for it. Uh, and at the end of the day, yeah, I think whichever coach it goes to. You know, they'll be the first one to say that you're only as good as your players and your staff around you. And, and I'm blessed with a fantastic staff and a great group of players. So whatever happens, be 
stays at the nomination or, or whatever, it'll be it'll be for all of us. It certainly won't just be for me. Well, many congratulations on what's been a tremendous autumn for uh, you and your team and a deserved nod as uh, Coach of the Year. Well done, Simon. Thanks very, Thanks very much for joining yeah. us. Well, that's uh, Simon Middleton. Let's hear now from his opposite number in Rob Kane. Did a difficult afternoon for the US Eagles up against the best in the world. We always knew this would be a challenge, a fourth test in 20 days against the world number one. How much can you take from today as an experience? Um, I think for the players, you know, playing in front of so many people is a, is a great experience going to the World Cup. Many of them haven't played in front of this atmosphere. We know it's going to be like that in New Zealand. Um, you know, this is the reality. We're playing against the best team in the world, full-time professionals. You know, I thought they were exceptional. They scored a full our mistakes. Every time that we tried to do something that we wanted to do, um, they were smarter, faster and quicker. And, and we were second best. And um, it shows us where we are. Do you in some ways have two challenges on your hand? There are short-term fixes in terms of the line of the set piece today, but also as a long-term issue attracting more players into the setup, developing rugby in, in the US? Yeah, I think so. I, th I think first and foremost, like I think consistency is the word for us. You know, we, we put on three very consistent performances in our first three matches. Our, our set piece was functioning really well. Um, we got found out today, you know, no excuses. England were the much better team. Um, I think a big part of that is realising that as, you know, professional amateurs, we're trying very hard to bridge the gap. But when you're playing against a team as well equipped as they are, um, this can happen. And, and we, we got found wanting today. How will the Pacific Fours, looking ahead, the new tournament um, that will see you qualify for the WXV global competition, how will that help the USA in just having, I guess, more regular fixtures, high pressure environment? Is that something that you're very much looking forward to? Oh, massive, yeah. It's going to be huge for us, but not just for us, the national team, but the colleges and the high schools. It gives us regular fixtures and gives them a platform to be able to showcase development, but also performances. I mean, we haven't played rugby in two years. 80% of our team haven't played club rugby in two years. So you can imagine from not going to that into this tour, we always know it was going to be ferocious. Uh, we're really proud of their work ethic and their effort. But in terms of where we are, core skills and tactical awareness, we're just behind others at the moment. Thank you very much, Sir Fredback. Thank you. That's Rob Kane. Uh, Mo Hunt's joined us down from the commentary box. Mo, England favourites for the Six Nations? Oh, they have to be. I mean, you need to look at that side and what they've done. They're so well drilled. Everyone's mentioned it. Yeah, they, they're right up there for me. I think the stat is something like in this 18-game winning streak for England, France are the only ones that have come within 25 points. And that's in six, in six games. They've been within six points of them. So... They're the ones that can do it if anyone can, but yeah, I can't see anything getting past this England side right now. And we heard Simon Middleton say that the Red Roses have raised the bar, not just in terms of what they're doing, but for the women's game. You agree with them? Yeah, 100%, 100%. And they put a statement out there today. Yeah. I think they have. I mean, they've encouraged other nations to almost improve their women's sides. We saw with Wales, they've now got professional contracts. Um, Ireland, there's been a few issues there, but it's encouraging other nations to really step up. And look, we want to have strong competitions in the women's games. We don't want to necessarily have walkovers, but it will only get better if we get better nations. For me as well, it's not even the international teams, it's what we're doing domestically in the league. The Allianz Premier 15s is driving this standard right now, and that's what we need other nations to get behind as well. Thank you very much to all three of you. Mo Hunt, tremendous in commentary over the last uh, month or so. Thank you very much indeed also to Maggie Alfonsi. And good luck for the Six Nations, Marley. It's been great to have you here with us today. Well, look, the Red Roses, as we've alluded to, they have raised the bar. It's undoubtedly they are now the team to beat as we head into the World Cup next year. We'll see you next here for the Six Nations. Bye from us all from Six Ways. Bye for now. Vicky Cornbra going over, and this will be worrying for the USA. Still going, Abby Dow! What a try! Thompson goes over in front of her home crowd on her 50th cap. Still rolling, going, big hand going there. Back inside to Tuima. Route one. They're going to go over again. She's got there. Zoe Orcroft, what a week. She's in a league of her own, Roland. Look at that smile. Oh, look at Bird, there's no stopping her. Holly Aitchison flies over. Sarah Bird, she has the last word. This scoreline is something special.